Right, we're all good? Mm hmm. All right. <clears throat> Oops, again, touching all my thing. Okay. Uh, last we left off. Uh, making a quick detour to the Pingors in hopes of uh, finding Gary, one of uh, four possible corners from his previous geometrically shaped adventuring party. Um, instead, a sentient bush found you uh, when you landed, who then revealed himself to be Gary. Surprise. Uh, after some brief reunion discussion catching up, you all hopped back onto Polaris, where Gary was to uh, set up a celebratory feast of sorts at the house he was building in the woods. Uh, during that trip, Gary vaguely explained that the waters around the uh, the lake, the palm, was strange. Riley, you went, went out to investigate uh, a pond that Gary had been using as a water source, only to find it strangely dark. Uh, with a look of deepness that seemed unnatural for a pond in the middle of the woods. Uh, you discovered it was actually rather shallow after diving headfirst in and cracking your neck, uh, though the appearance of deepness never really ceased when you're even when you're standing in it. It was then you had a vision of an orange, white, and black fish that jumped out of the pond uh, that told you to excise the parasite. Your apotheosis vessel, vessel? Apotheosis vessel pointed west, towards the palm. Gary offered to guide you to that strange pond where you all discovered a thick fog and a small band of molten horde marauders. Chris, drawing on your history of knowledge, you disguise yourself as uh, Juga the Slag Lord, the uh, probable leader of the molten horde. Riley, while you're invisible and speaking through Chris like a puppet, uh, with the use of tongues, you both managed to interrogate the goblins who were uh, seemingly trying to summon the quote-unquote spirit of the deep. All the while, the marauders were slowly disappearing, one by one. Uh, Janna, you witnessed. Uh, and later, Zero, the goblins were being sucked into the lake, and after they realized their numbers have thinned quite considerably, ran away. It was then, though, Zero, you noticed the barely uh, perceptible shape of a huge shark made of just uh, pure darkness and black glass lurking very close to the surface, mere feet away from you as you teleport back to safety with your blinkback boots. A fight ensues as you slay the immaterial shark swimming through the fog, and upon the death of this creature, almost immediately, a wave of clear water from the river washes away the fog and the darkness from it as normalcy and beauty returns to the lake. Oh, so, you find yourself... Amidst the ice shards of what is the remnants of the shark after uh, Riley's cone of cold froze solid as it hit the ground, scattered into hundreds of pieces, some bigger, some smaller. Uh, Gary's not looking great. Riley's not looking great. You're sort of uh, keeled over the lake, Riley. What would you guys like to do? Hmm. Just taking the calm. It's been a long day. Okay. Uh, how uh, how far out did we come from Gary's house? Uh, a few miles, I think. Yeah, like a couple miles. Hmm. So it'd be, it'd be a walk back a few hours. How's everyone looking health-wise? I'm at less than 10%. Uh... Gary has six hit points. Oh no. Oh, can Janna cast some healing? Did we just not get to this last time? Uh, no, no, yeah, the combat sort of ended. And, yeah. So you guys are all taking in a breath, uh, catching yourselves after this, uh, being bitten and stabbed several times by a huge floating shark. Uh, Janna will cast Healing Spirit. Um... Okay. What's a fun animal? Maybe like a little bunny? Okay. Spring in our world. Yeah, as you summon a little bunny that's hopping around in a circle, creating like a little uh, oh, healing and I will aura. Cast at fourth level. Third le Wait. Fourth level. Okay. That's what? 46 or something? 46 plus uh... two? Out of combat, 10d6, and that does it say how much it goes up. 
So it'd be 40 d6 by then. 40. So it'd be 40, 40, 40 d6. 40 d6. Yeah, because you're casting it at uh, wait, no, the second level, so it's going to be... Sorry. Oh, it just drops down to a, uh, a much more manageable 30 d6. I'm sorry. <laughs> what is that? 30 d6. Okay. That seems good. We kind of hurt. Yeah. And I just roll this for everyone, right? Yeah. 30d6 plus 30. spell cast modifier. Wait, what's your uh, wisdom modifier right now? My wisdom is... That's two, right? One. Plus one, okay, so that'd be... Okay. Uh, so I'll just uh, do a... So I'm rolling 30d6 plus one. Uh, you're doing it technically... Ten, it'd be 30d6 30, 30 plus ten. Plus ten. Nice. Yeah. The, the Next campaign, this will absolutely not work anymore. <laughs> And let's go. <laughs> that can't be right. <laughs> I don't. No, that's right. Everyone, yeah, fully healed. And then we divide us. this by how many? You don't divide it. Everyone just gets it. Oh. If, if, but by the weird, like, gamey logic of just everyone holds their turn and runs through, it technically applies to everybody. <laughs> the All revolving right, door well, of idiots yeah, strikes again. Now we learned yeah. how great that is to cast at a higher level. I just kind of picked one arbitrarily. <laughs> arbitrarily. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy it while it lasts. If you get the spell next campaign, it's not going to work this way anymore. It was definitely needed, though. Thank you. Yeah, as, as uh, I think, I don't think Merrick was even hit the whole time. No, he wasn't. Also, uh, look at all those, snap, no look at all those sixes on there. That also is a good roll. Yeah, it was. It was. You got yeah. Of the thirty, you only got what four ones. Oh yeah, I yeah, forgot. That's, I that's a pretty good roll. I'm only at one hit point, so that helps. <laughs> oh, yeah. It seems to happen a lot in this campaign. I don't know why. That was a tough fight. I really thought some of us were yeah. were done. So I, it was not looking good for Riley yeah. for a second there. I think Riley went down once or twice. Once. Okay, Gary went down. Did Chris once. ever go down, or he was about to? Right, Chris was about to go down. I think he held on with one hit point. Oh, okay. Who got the finishing blow again? It was Riley. Yeah. That's fitting. Yeah, poetic justice. Okay. While everything's happening, can I, um... Wait, okay, because he turned the shark into ice and it shattered, right? Pretty much. Like, it's still vaguely shark-shaped, but it's kind of like a broken vase, where it's like, you could stick it back together if you wanted to. Like, you can recognize the shape, but it isn't, you know, several hundred pieces. Like, some big... Uh, person-sized chunks. Some are like fragments on the ground that are. Some of them are slowly beginning to melt. Even. Can I um, investigate and see if I can salvage anything? I, I know it's like it's fucking. You just compared it to a vase. If there's anything here that we could salvage for like selling later or something. Uh, make an invest. Make an investigation or medicine check. Your choice. Yeah, it depends on how you want to go with this. Okay. Uh, yeah, just rooting through. Some of the, uh, uh, just fragments of shark, pretty much. Uh, mo most of the inside is only slightly frozen. It's still a little bit fleshy, and inside it is, like, flesh, flesh. It's not just that weird shadowy material that's sort of immaterial uh, in some ways. Like, grasping at, like, fog, almost. Um, yeah, inside is actually, like, flesh. Like, there is scales, and you can see bits of teeth, um, you find a couple of organs, if you like them. Uh, you're not sure what they are, uh, but you do notice that a lot of them do have this uh, almost spiky look to them, like something's growing out of them, these little black shards of glass. Wait, so I don't know if this would be a track or if I'd even be able to figure this out. Does this look like a creature that was just corrupted? By the corruption, or does this look like a creature that just maybe came from a pillar or something? Like, does this look like, I think, similar to any other creatures that we have in this world that might have gotten like corrupted by something? Uh, unless you want to make a check from a cursory glance, um, just the little black glass things do look pretty familiar. Uh, you're not sure what the origin is like if it came from one of the pillars or if it was corrupted or anything but the the, the glass is very evocative of the uh, the other creatures you've seen like where that did have also very similar veins of black glass shooting out of them 
I guess, realistically, Riley or Jana would know more about this kind of thing than I would. I guess I'll turn to them and ask them if they can tell if this is uh, a creature that was corrupted or if this is a creature that came from the pillar. Well, it's a little bit unrecognizable now, but I can maybe wrap my brain thing a bit. Uh, would I go history or nature check? Uh, so this would be a nature check at disadvantage because it is it, it is not a normal right. animal you've seen, and it's also not in like it's also in several pieces. Right. Can what I, are we waiting before for? Before we do that, can I cast mending on this without it coming back to life? That's interesting. Yep. It's a cantrip. I'm just gonna go for it. It cost me nothing. Go for it. I touch it. It's a verdict. I rub my hands all over it. <laughs> Little gnome fingers. I got Cheeto dust on them. <laughs> would he count? Would this count as an object now that he's dead? It's all. What's a construct? DM, what's the word? Yeah, and I understand that this just doesn't work. I just. I guess you can consider it. What a weird situation for something now. to be that was alive, now ice, and then broken, and they can be put back together in ice form. And I guess Might that's be, weird. Have like a rulings on that? It seems like a pretty complicated thing. Yeah, if you don't even want to stop to think about it, it can just be a no. Oh, no. oh, well, there's our answer. Oh, no, I was about to ask. I was about to ask if he's still here. Yeah, that's not good. You're going to want to reconnect, Simon. Oh, no. We broke Simon. Wait, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can Simon? hear you. Okay. Hello? I heard something. Uh oh. oh no. I don't think it's working. Yeah. yeah. Like Green ring happens, but no audio. Oh no. What happened? Something come unplugged? What the fuck? Hello? Oh, oh, there oh, you go. Is that it? You're good now. Hello? Yeah, I heard a little like Hello? pop. Yeah, Hello? it must have been like a chord or something. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. A good. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. What happened? I, no, I wouldn't do anything. I was just talking. What the fuck? Well, if it's you good, said it's anything, good now, though, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's fine now. We heard nothing from you, though. Yeah. What was the last thing you heard? Last nothing. Thing, nothing. <laughs> yeah, I was, I... would be like, hey, can I put together a shark made of ice with mending? Yeah, and then we got no response. And then oh. my, yeah. Uh, no. Because yeah, it's more fair. creature. <laughs> that's fair. Jana's gonna try it anyway and be like, oh, well, I gave it my best shot. Yeah, it would still take several hundred minutes because the casting had like a minute. So, it'd be a while. Alright, um, let's see how lucky Riley's gonna get. Yeah, was this a nature? He's actually then? pretty fucking lucky. Yeah, it was nature at disadvantage, but what the disadvantage did not matter. Yeah, you got the oh, same wow. Advice. Uh, oh, nice. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, you both come to the same conclusion that uh, th this th this is like an actual shark, seemingly at one point, but there is a series of weirdness that happened to it that you're not sure exactly what it was. Uh, but like just digging through the you know corpse and like looking for organs like these are organs like they are like actual pieces of a shark you can see like swim bladder and like the heart and like like they're like biologically where they should be so you gather this was once a shark but a it's huge and you're not sure whether that's just because of what happened to it caused it or if it was already huge um uh but yeah and b it is definitely weird. Something definitely happened to like an actual biological shark, but uh, as to what exactly, can't say for certain. Riley, are you thinking what I'm thinking? 
This is weird. It, I mean, this level of wrongness, it is reminiscent of a certain black pillar. If the corruption thinking. reaches this far, then even our seas are doomed if we don't stop this. It's interesting that it's huge. I think that kind of, uh, I mean, there's, there's that whole, like, I think branch of our campaign that we never really got an answer about is like the animals that have grown. Like, yeah, Jana had a whole like, like research thing on that, right? Through. On the gigantism. Where is it? Yeah. A study of uh, gigantism in animals. Because mm -hmm. whatever that is, that has affected the oceans. I think this is like the second creature now, right? Because the first one was the lion. Yeah, there was... The sh and the oh, shrimp. no. The, there was another no, shark, the, no, wasn't it, there? Was yeah, it, there was another huge shark stuff? at the... Yeah, in Fairhaven. Oh, I forgot about them. Yeah, no, no. Oh, yeah. The shrimp is the shrimp is because of uh, Aralok. Mm. But, but uh, no, that shark had no reason to be that large. Yeah, the, the and shark. This, one doesn't matter. Uh, this shark is roughly the size, like slightly smaller than Rotate. Like it's pretty big. What the fuck? That that shark that we saw in Fairhaven was a little more intelligent than the rest of them. Yeah. Because they were able to communicate with Janna, I think. I'm looking at my notes from then, and the things I wrote down was giant shark covered in scars, and then my words were freedom, servitude, hunger, swift. Hunger. Which to me They're doesn't like read the same, but yeah, I'm not, oh yeah, servitude. Freedom, I could be being trapped. Huh. We did free them, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. We solved the puzzle. <laughs> it's like too dumb to figure out the sand. The sand <sighs> ball is like very soft. Oh, it was also illusion hidden something, I think. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of freedom, there's a prisoner in here. <laughs> okay, you look you go to the water's edge? Yeah. Okay. So we're um, just here into the water. Yeah. Yeah, before I should actually maybe um help us all by uh, giving us some water breathing before we jump in. Oh, you still have your mask on, don't you? Oh, wait, are we getting in the oh, water? Oh, yeah, I do. What were we doing here again? Freeing a prisoner. Excising a parasite. Well, we did that part, I thought. Yeah, we did the second part. Don't know about the, the first part yet. Yeah, um, yeah. I guess I'll do water breathing as a ritual. Okay. It's up to ten creatures, so I think that's everyone. Then Riley doesn't need it. Yeah. Because your vessel. Correct the mundo. Okay. All right. So you uh, begin to cast water breathing. Anyone else want to do anything in this time? There's no more bodies laying around, right? He ate everything. Uh, there is... Uh, the goblins left. There's no trace of the goblins that got sucked in. Uh, the only bodies are of the shark and those two uh, weird crayfish eel things that crawled out, out of the lake as well. Okay. Are we all going to go in the water? All of us? I think that's what, like, what what were we doing? Why are we getting in the water? I didn't even say I was getting in the water. I'm just at the edge, for now, anyway. I'm just uh, giving it in case we want to explore <laughs> under there. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. Sounds like Chris wants to go in the water. Yeah, how about we let Chris, <laughs> what's, it, what's it called when you're like the one that goes ahead of everyone else? Like scout? scout? Yeah, you can scout. Uh, rather make a perception check. Sure. And just don't roll shit. There's more shit in the water, isn't okay. there? Chris, go scout. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, Riley. Sorry, just find yourself at the water's edge, just looking out into the lake. Uh, you can smell the cleanness of the water 
and the light sort of glinting off its surface, it is somewhat refreshing to you, especially after the weirdly uh, oppressive darkness that used to just cover and coat this general area. Uh, you're just taking your time, taking the surroundings, and just looking into the water, the bright afternoon sun, just glancing off in little white dappled reflections. Uh, with that perception check, you notice that uh, not all of the light is coming from above you, that you can see. You can see some of it is coming from within the lake. You see uh, multiple thin strips of a scintillating color shifting between reds, oranges, yellows, blues, in a wave-like pattern, just glowing in the water. Uh, and with that perception check, you can sort of stare at it for a little bit. It's almost mesmerizing in some ways, and it's getting closer. It is approaching. Allow it. Okay. All right. It's approaching. Not fast or anything. It is like a steady pace. Uh, whatever it is is about to reach the surface. Uh, as it is, as it's about to, you can see the sunlight illuminates a dark shape in the water. Vaguely uh, reptilian with a wide arrow-shaped head. Uh, the thin strips of light spread out in long strands from the face like whiskers, uh, while others seem to line the body of this creature in just long, thin strips across the length. Uh, it's uh, just as big, if not slightly bigger, than the shark you just killed. Uh, and it does breach the water strangely silently. Uh, the rest of you don't even really notice it until you turn and you can see it about 20 feet in the sky as it launches itself uh, into the air, uh, opening up massive wings uh, that must be brought like 50 feet end to end. Uh, underneath the wings, you can see even more strips of flashing colors just lining the wings. Uh, the wing shape is reminiscent to fins and flexible tendrils of various sea creatures. You can see its underbelly silver in color with a reflective sheen to it, like the scales of a fish. Uh, this huge reptilian creature lands on the ground with a heavy thud. Uh, if you didn't notice it then, you certainly notice it now. The world is that a dragon? Oh. Yo, that's sick. I run. You run? <laughs> yeah, I think this reactionary, I like run towards Chris and just away from where I was standing. Okay. Riley will turn towards this strange thing and say, Are you the prisoner? Yeah. Uh, yeah, as the creature lands, it leaves very deep imprints in the uh, dirt with its claws, which Riley at this distance, very close, uh, you can see are webbed in between each digit. Uh, and while the underside was a light color, the top is very uh, dark, taking on a blue-black hue to it with a slight discoloration of red towards the end. It definitely does look like a dragon. Uh, very similar in shape and size to Ritave. Maybe a little bit thinner in terms of just overall uh, girth. And the huge wings are just flap back and forth as if just uh, waiting on water. The flashing lights uh, mesmerizing and just unmoving from position it looks over to you, Riley. Yes, I am. It was dark and confusing within the abyss that the shark created for itself. The small, beady, pupilless white eyes turn towards the rest of you uh, that are sort of just... The, the, the rest that stayed, Zero, you are bolting. How far away? No, I was just, I, because I was over here by the shark, so now I came back here by Chris. Okay. Uh, yeah, the eyes turn towards the rest of you, Zodiacs, opening its mouth to reveal a uh, just maw filled with needle-like teeth like a deep-sea fish. Well done, Zodiacs. We are impressed by your strength, and thank you for your service. 
the dragon bows its arrow-shaped head slowly for a few seconds and rises again. I am called Pelagi, but I am unimportant other than to bring you where you are requested. The goddess of seas, storm, and song grants you and your choosers an audience. The dragon turns back towards the lake, graceful in its movements, and dips a single claw into the surface of the pond, or the lake, I guess, creating a large ripple, a loud echoing drip sound just rings from it, and it just rings for a long, long time as the ripple it creates becomes larger and larger, more violent, until eventually becomes a dark whirlpool about 20 feet in diameter. Uh, the dragon, Pelagi, turns towards Garrick. Garrick? Garrick and <laughs> Gary. Uh, Gary, who's, who was looking a bit battered, but uh, he's currently doing okay. Merrick was just keeping him supported on his shoulder. I apologize, Mr. Gary and Merrick. This audience only extends to the Zodiacs. However, your contributions to us will not be forgotten. Pelagi puts another claw into the water and sort of flings it upwards, splashing a few drips of water towards the pair, as it does a treasure chest the size of a dresser is flung from the whirlpool and lands at their feet. Oh, uh, nice. Filling open a little bit as it hits the ground, and you can see there is a plethora of gold coins, gems, jewelry, what have you. Wealth is a small prize in comparison to the deed you have done for us today. But on this material plane, we believe it will serve well. Uh... Gary Merrick sort of just looks at it, looks at each other, very confused what's going on right now. Gary sort of just shrugs and starts, like, shoving stuff into his pockets. <laughs> uh, Merrick sort of just stops him and just puts the rest of the coins into the chest, closes it, and just hefts it over one shoulder. Uh, Gary's just stuffing what he can, turns towards you. But I guess uh, you have meeting with a, a big dragon. <laughs> That's right. Duty calls, gang. Are you two in a wait here? Uh, or are they going to head back? Merrick sort of just turns to Gary. No, we have a, a house to demolish. Okay, is this I wish I was there to help. Oh, wait, because uh, Polaris is at Gary's house, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we'll yep. head back anyway. Okay, I'm sorry. Cool, I guess we'll see you when we see you. I suppose so. I don't know where you'll be spit out once you jump in. We shall see. We'll keep your dragon safe. Thanks. And Merrick just turns towards the the direction of the house and starts, starts walking. Gary just follows. He just sort of just smiles and waves backwards as he sort of runs backwards into a tree, uh, almost knocking the bucket off his head, writes itself, and starts following Merrick deeper into the woods. Huh. Dragon sort of just steps aside a little bit, pulls out one claw like a hand and just usher you towards the whirlpool. The goddess awaits. For too <laughs> long, even. Riley will step inside. Okay. Uh, as you jump in, it is not a graceful ride at all. You are just sucked in violently. Uh, how about the rest of you? Yeah, I'll run. I'll run in. <laughs> I guess it's good Curtis cast a spell on us. Um, I mean, I guess I will follow Chris, not as violently. <laughs> uh, I think the Berserker follows you as well. <laughs> Attempts to, at least. I forgot he's still alive. I think he's still here, I think. If not, it would be funnier if he was. 
Uh, yeah, after an hour. It hasn't been an hour yet. He's still here. He's 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 fine. Okay, you all jump in. I guess. Yep. All right. Okay, as you all one by one begin to uh, jump, dive, cannonball, backflip your way into this whirlpool, uh, it, is, it is not a smooth ride. You are pulled and just dragged under through just uh, darkness and bubbles. You just see just blue, black, white just all around you as you're just flung and tumbled every which way direction. Uh, it's almost disorienting and in some ways nauseating as you are just like being pulled into the sea by a riptide. Like it just all of a sudden, this sudden force just yanks you to one direction. And so eventually after about a few seconds, 10 minutes, uh, 10 seconds, 15 seconds or so, it eventually calms and you find yourself just floating in a space of black. Uh, you can see clearly all of you, but you don't see anything else beyond it. Uh, except for a few vague lights of red, orange, yellow, blue, just slowly flashing. Uh, you see one of these blue lights slowly approaching you. Uh, and as it does, you can see it's like a three foot long like anglerfish with this tendril in front, these huge jagged teeth just under it, these uh, white eyes that are just milky and blind just floats past you. Uh, a couple seconds past, you see a huge great white shark float past you. You see a salmon, just a regular freshwater fish float past you. Eventually the lights begin to multiply and brighten the interior. Uh, you find yourself in a huge cavernous space. You don't see any natural light, you don't see any sunlight, but you do see the rock that makes up this area, this craggy, porous, uh, almost limestone-like rock. And you see uh, it's spherical in shape, but you can see there's glowing polyps of coral and hanging plants from the surface, above the surface, up at the ceiling that just glows uh, below you, you can see almost what looks like a coral palace, like this kingdom made of ocean stuff. And you see seaweed growing up like gardens. You see buildings made of just various coral and rock elements. You see dozens, hundreds of fish just floating, mind their own business. You see carnivorous fish and just fish that mind their own business doing nothing. No one's killing each other necessarily. Uh, you don't see the dragon but you do find yourself alone in this space. Riley, your Apollo's vessel vibrates and almost points its direction towards the entrance to this palace, this uh, almost cylindrical tower in the center. And you can see there is a opening at the very bottom of it. Follow. Okay. As you all begin to swim downwards, you find it effortless and you can breathe, uh, whether because it's this space you find yourself in or because of Chris's spell, you, as you swim, you don't seem to feel the same resistance as you do. It's almost like swimming through air, like every push of your hands and feet just feels like it has more force behind it as you propel yourself at speed you didn't think were possible. Riley, this feels completely normal to you. Mm. But after a few seconds of travel, you find yourself at the basin, or at the base of this cylindrical tower, this huge, almost uh, candy cane uh, colored spiraling cylindrical tower of just uh, red and pink coral. Uh, you can see at the entrance there are uh, two sharks, uh, almost humanoid, like, like, like were sharks almost, just carrying spears, but the heads are very shark-like and they have dorsal fins and they're just standing at guard almost. And they don't move as you approach past through the thresholds. They don't do anything. Inside you find a dark space. Uh, similar to the space you found yourself when you first got here. It is just pitch black. And eventually the light behind you from that cave closes with a large uh, and you find yourself pitch black except for four lights uh, one green 
one blue, uh, one a silvery color, and one yellow. They are spaced out uh, across from each other perfectly in like a, uh, yeah, just from across from each other, like a square shape almost. Those were the colors that correlated to our uh, vessels, right? Uh, seemingly. Can you read a believe... assignment? Sorry. You are you find yourself at once you enter this cylindrical tower, the door closes behind you, and you find four lights. Nothing else, uh, just floating here. But you can still see yourself clearly. But the four lights is one is green, one is blue, one is a silver color, and one is yellow. And they're just across from each other in like a square shape, like the corners of a square. If I'm not mistaken, Riley's uh, apotheosis vessel was blue, so we'll go to that one. Okay. You swim towards the blue one. Uh, the moment you swim to it, a your corner, if you will, lights up, and you see this dark, uh, sorry, this light just breach through this unseen stained glass window. And looking at the stained glass, it is a mural made up of various colors, orange, yellow, black mainly, that make up this uh, jumping fish that jumps up from the bottom of this window, which looks like a depiction of the sea with its blues, to the clouds up in the top of the window with the whites. Eventually, the stained glass almost comes to life and begins to move. As it does, it almost gets pulled out of the window and becomes material, real, and you see this, uh, the rest of you see this multi-finned fish, somewhat uh, catfish-like, with these long whiskers of brown, uh, colorations of orange, black, and white scales, almost like a koi fish, as it gracefully swims out. You see multi multiple fins, six fins, and several fins just lining the top of it, a huge tail, as it just begins circling above Riley. Um, can I revert my pointy six of funsies into the Pathiosis vessel just to double check my color? Okay. Uh, as you reverts back to yellow, uh, yeah, your, your Pathiosis vessel is a yellow color. It just sort of just uh, jingle jangles violently with no seeming pattern or uh, consistency. Then I'll uh, head to the yellow light. Okay. Swim towards a yellow light. As you swim far enough, again, the stained glass window appears. Uh, your stained glass window uh, appears to be one half of a mask. Uh, one side is black with white eyes. The other side is white with black eyes. One is frowning, one is smiling. And every time you blink, it almost seems like it shifts in different expressions. Angry, sadness, uh, elation, rage. Like it's... It's a different feeling every single time you look at it until eventually you blink far enough. It almost becomes real. Uh, and from it, a the mess shrinks into uh, just a little pinpoint. But then from it, the body of a person begins to sprout from it almost from the stained glass. This pink glass begins to form. Uh, a large, muscular man uh, wearing this almost featureless mask with just the eyes visible, a silver mask, uh, or sorry, gray mask. A very muscular, tall man with these black braids, almost, these bundles tied up in uh, little distances from each other to make these bundles of hair uh, just tied, begins to emerge from the glass window. You can hear this almost cracking sound from it as the glass shatters with each limb pulled free from the window. Every time a uh, fragment of glass breaks, you hear laughter, screaming, crying, uh, sounds of people getting beat up. Uh, and from it, uh, yeah, this like eight foot tall man is just standing there like a JoJo character. Uh, the rest of you, Chris, you've seen this guy before. The rest yeah. of you hear, holy shit, I feel great. What the fuck's going on? Does this set a look familiar to the guy that I saw in Chris's vision? It does. Oh no. 
<laughs> this isn't Monty, but this is the guy Monty was worried about, right? What's his name? Ed Ali? Something like that? Yeah. Ed Ali, yeah. This is the, the guy Chris presumably made a deal with all those years back. Mm-hmm. In game time, like, three days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's as you, eight feet tall. He's like eight foot tall, yeah. Oh, I don't like that. Like, like really tall. Oh, that's really creepy. Uh, yeah. Uh, as you're also looking at this, uh, what you can only, can you only assume is the patron of Chris for, for like this whole time. You know, you've never really seen him before. Uh, this god, more, uh, more or less, looks at all of you and the neck stretches towards you, Zero. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just, just the neck. The body stays still, but the neck just cranes <laughs> towards you and twists. He uh, knows I hate tall people, and he knows I hate like body horror shit. What the fuck? Yeah, and the the head just rests in front of you, like inches away from you. And as you're just listening there, you can hear the hand just following along in like a weird curving pattern, and just holds its hand out from like twenty feet away from you. Hi, God. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Did he introduce himself as God? Yeah. <laughs> of course. Uh, you said his hand is... Yeah. His hand is 20 feet away from me, right? Or is yeah, it... but the body's still the same. The body's still standing like a JoJo character, like a pillar man. The hand and the head, it just craned towards you in like weird patterns. Uh, I think my expression looks a little freaked out, but I will just very slowly and politely give him a salute. <laughs> I'll just say hi. Uh, pretty sure you probably know my name. Nope. And he just goes towards you, Jana. Hi, God. Nice to meet you. Jana takes his hand. Hi, I'm Can't also take his God. Hand. <laughs> Can't you take his hand? It's like you you press and it's, it his hand squishes like it deforms. Mm. Uh, like it's like rubber almost. Uh, and he, the body just cranes backwards. The fingers stay there as it just the fingers just elongate as the rest of the body returns. And as the body just returns to its normal position with the fingers still in your grasp, he sort of just shakes it free. <laughs> that was uncomfortable. I'm saying this aloud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining like what's that? I never did the Mario games, but that one thing where you can like stretch Mario's face around on like a menu. That's what I'm saying. That's Mario 64. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is a bit like that. Awful. Well, is he stretching from the, the, he's stretching the glass from window? You. Oh. No, he's, he's, he's emerged from the glass window at this point, but he's, he's standing, he's more or less standing behind you. Uh, you got, you're still floating. Okay. Uh, yeah, but he's just standing behind you with the, the rest of the limbs just stretched to wherever they want. Jana's you see him do this before, it's fine. Jana's gonna try to catch Zero's eyeline, like, let's look at each other and not this awful thing in the room. You know, one of those <laughs> type of things. And be like, I don't remember my color. Do you just want to, like, there's all, it's a 50-50 shot. You just want to pick one? <laughs> uh... And if it's wrong, we switch. Unless you remember. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can go first, and then I'm, whoever... I'm kind of curious what happens if we do the wrong one. I'm a, I hope nothing, but <laughs> I am curious. I think I'm silver, but I'm not certain, so Jana will go stand at silver. Okay, you swim towards the silver one. Nothing seems to happen. Is it green? Green is the next one? Yeah. Okay, go to green. Okay. And with that, a stained glass window appears behind you uh this one almost segmented into four quadrants but the same figure uh, is in this uh center of all of them uh the top left is a depiction of uh a tree bl in bloom the next one uh almost like forest fires uh the next one a uh, tree the same tree in a uh in autumn the oranges and yellows and the next one is just a bare tree with white snow and in the center of it you see a a uh, hooded figure uh, in green with these large uh, orange-brown, almost ropes of braid on either side with a crossbow in hand. Uh, and from it, the figure begins to just walk very calmly 
out of the stained glass and just plop down in front of you. Can uh, gonna throw up like a peace sign? Like, what's up? Welcome back. Uh, Maharl, your patron, sort of just throws it up as well. Uh, she begins looking around and just almost begins like waving her hand and as you can see like almost these little fluffs of pollen just sort of just emit from her skin and she's just crinkles her fingers together and a flower appears from them and she gives a slightly bigger smile and she just throws her hand uh just forward with great force and you can see this huge display of just plant growth just erupts out of nowhere huge trees entire forest just emerge from behind you well, this is familiar. Good to see you, uh, man. It is good to see you, too. This is a um, strange phenomena. I felt, I feel like I once did here. Hmm. Uh, Maharl, this little tall uh, say they less taller than the dude that emerged from Chris's painting, but still like a tall woman, uh, looks towards Yuzero and just ushers towards the silver light. Final piece of the puzzle. I step forward to the silver light. Okay. All right. As your stained glass window appears, you see a colossal bookshelf in, uh, brown and yellow glass. The books almost fluttering off the shelves themselves and turning into the silver owls that fly off. And uh, peering through the bookshelf, you can see a smaller diminutive woman uh, with a silver uh, bun and uh, a silver, green, and purple cloak just thrown around her uh, with the feet, all like owl's feet, this yellow scaled clawed uh, pair of legs she sports as she just begins to silently organize books and just walk around the bookshelf and step out of the uh, painting plopping down beside you zero how small is she <laughs> she, she's uh, taller than Jenna but smaller than the rest of you <laughs> she's, she's like four foot tall Jenna. she's so yeah. cute I imagine her like Madam Foster in my head Aww. Oh, it, it, a little bit like that yeah <laughs> Like double, like double uh, Foster's height, but she's still very small, pretty much. <laughs> like like dwarf size, but like not without you know not the build. And she sort of just plops down, and begins to just. The rest of you guys are swimming, but these gods seem to be just be walking. As they see it for the giant fish. Um, uh, Alina just walks up towards you, zero, and just begins looking around and just pulls out a book from underneath a cloak, begins thumbing through it, and behind you and the rest of you see this this huge colossal library just appears behind her. Uh, you see owls delivering books, candles lit on little tables, uh, and just the fluttering of pages and the smell of ink. Chris, something you're very familiar with. Uh, Alina, your patron here, looks towards the giant fish that's floating above the uh, Riley right now. Neat trick. This is a risky maneuver, Guina, but not an un unwelcome one. Uh, Guina, the fish floating above Rally, goes towards the center of all of you, and the scenery that some of your gods have made begins to fade as it be turns back into this brightly lit coral palace made of pink, yellow, orange. Uh, and in the center, a central table made of this uh, green, uh, light green stone, almost. This, the stained glass windows stay, uh, just embedded in the palace itself, but you find yourself in a large, tall chamber uh, with a table in front of you. Gravity resumes, there's no water anymore. You just sit on this huge throne made of coral uh, with your gods. All four of your gods beside you. God con, God con, God con. <laughs> <laughs> More or less, this is God con. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Gwina sort of begins to rotate above your head, Riley, as a voice, not coming from the fish, but sort of just emanating from your brains. Welcome. I am Gwina, goddess of seas, storm, and song. I was trapped in this small cave when the invader took hold of the world. The shark kept me hostage in fear. I did not wish to bring corruption to this realm I made, so I hid. And begins to just hover even closer to you, Riley. Until a champion was found powerful enough to free my vassal and cleanse the caves and the rivers that became my prison. For this, I thank you, Zodiacs. We stand in a location that I have purified over time, free of corruption. I focus for our divine energies, energies that I share with your patrons today. Uh, Alina sort of just looks towards you, Gwina, or towards the Gwina. And for that, we are grateful, oh Gwina. I suppose we must take this moment to lay our cards on the table while we have the chance. Our powers have declined since the millennia that has passed. If either of the four of you have any questions to speak of, now would be the time. This is not a character. I feel like a kid in elementary school again when like I bring my parent to school and I'm like excited for my friends to meet my mom, you know? That's how I, feel. <laughs> uh, I do have the one. It's pretty obvious that, you know, we need to take care of the invader, make sure that our realms do not fall into their hands. What happens after we, assuming we are victorious, what do you lot want to have accomplished? Uh, Alin and Mahar all sort of looks towards each other. Uh, Mahar, the tall, uh, just, uh, well-seasoned and traveled woman just looks towards you, Riley. Well, um, I certainly don't have any intentions of returning to Godhood. I don't think, uh, that's just me. I don't know about you, Lavena, and Elena replies. I am more or less in the same mindset. We, we old gods, if you will, did a fairly poor job of managing the realm. It is, uh, easy to lose sight of what's on the ground when you live in the clouds. And because of that, look what happened. We fought amongst our, each other and weakened ourselves to the point we couldn't even really defend what we were fighting for. What happens after, as long as the world is safe, that is enough for me. I believe me and Mahal have been doing relatively well, given the circumstances. And my lady, you are the same? Uh, Gwina sort of just hovers around you, and the stained glass, the clouds in the stained glass turns to storms, and uh, the waves in the sea begin to just become more violent. 
If given the opportunity, I would wish to return to my rightful place, though there is a new god that resides in the same domain. If not removed, I would be content to stay if it would disrupt the order too much. Uh, Edda Ellie, Chris, your god, just goes, fuck that, I want a party. <laughs> Completely unsurprised. When this is all over, I am going to get drunk and probably kill somebody. Could you make that somebody a chem? No. Oh. <laughs> No, he can't be helpful. Silly. That's someone that gets me. <laughs> uh, I guess I, the only question I can think of right now is what do you for know of the new gods? Who are they? How did they rise to power like that? A linear sort of pipes up. Well, that's the uh, million dollar question. Million gold question, if you will. Try as I might, I could not figure out when exactly the new gods rose up, other than they came about in the turn of the era. They are an interesting case study that we old gods are created when enough belief behind us coalesces into us if enough gods enough people believed in a god of knowledge named Elena, i would be born there were hundreds thousands of gods in our time but there's only 10 well worshipped at least now i found they were strangely curated they are too exact and perfect to be an accident. They are real, of course, but strangely picked out. And you... despite them being, the circumstances being strange about their creation, so far I think they are doing a better job than we were. They've kept the peace longer than we have. They've also kept the people in the dark. Yeah. Nobody but us knows the incoming threat. Do you yeah. have speculation of who may have curated them? I wish I knew. And the keeping people in the dark was not their idea. That was uh, ours. Uh, Mahar also just looks and uh, looks. It gives a serious look. Uh, when is a fish doesn't react, and the uh, Ellie's just standing there, sort of just like picking a nose that grew on the mask. Uh, <laughs> we believe that the invader derives much of its power from. Being in every location at once, if that makes sense. When, uh... Vizori Novos... Uh... Well, then it sort of gives a somewhat sullen... Sullen? Uh, sorrowful look. When Vizori Novos... More or less imploded, it... Caused something happen. I've been trying to suss out what happened this whole time, but I was not able to discern the cause or reason, but it caused a split in the invader's location. A parallel existence, if you will. Currently, it is dormant, hence why it is a rock floating in the sky. We do not know the consequences of people believing that there is a threat as I established earlier when something when enough people believe in something it becomes real 
So, we devised a plan to more or less erase the event from history in fear of the invader returning. Based on belief and becoming gods in their own right. You have my point exactly. Mm, I hadn't considered that. Hmm. That's a tricky situation. So, uh... Is it correct to assume that the invaders stir once more? Uh, Maharl begins to pipe up. Well, the invader itself, I don't know. But the remnants of it, certainly. In my travels, I've seen corrupted and biospawn apparatus alike beginning to move of their own volition. To what ends, I do not know, but they are still in existence in this reality, on this plane. It is not an unfeasible chance that they could be attempting to find a reason or method to free the invader from its parallel existence. Hmm. The corrupted are mindless until you find certain types. Those types, I believe, would be retain the intellect capable of planning and scheming. I think we met some of them. I believe you have the yellow slimy things. Corrupted hearts, they're called. Uh, I do remember one time touching the pillar, I had a vision of what was to be Raziri Novos inside a pillar. Uh, I'll minister just goes wide-eyed. Do you have a location? Uh, none except that it was viewed to be on an island. Remember what Zal told us, Rezeri Novos, at least, uh, is to blame for the winterification of the continent of Thane. True, Elena pipes up. But Rezeri Novos is also responsible for ending the Void Era. Hmm. That's all the information I have to go off of. I'm pretty sure she's stuck in Thane. I tried getting hold of her, but uh, magics don't seem to reach. That's questions a little bit more complicated. The uh, island that Rizori Novos resides on, with information given to me, by zero in your travels and watching, gathering of evidence, I thank you for this, Zodiacs. And with the finding of Zal and the, look, the information that he divulged, I believe it uh, is a difficult island to pin down. I believe it is, it exhibits some properties of the invader of existing everywhere at once I've tried to locate it for a little bit and to no avail scrying does not work scouts do not work existing everywhere at once would that mean something to do with the other planes I don't believe so it is a strange phenomenon when the invader attacked it would stay in one location till no one was looking at it the moment it was unobserved it would seemingly appear somewhere else it would teleport more or less across the whole world spewing 
its pillars and its ships from every angle at once. I believe this island exhibits some of those properties. If one was to find it and look at it, it would exist. They could climb onto it, but the moment no one was there to observe it, it would be gone. And yet Novos is on it. Seemingly. I wish I knew more. This is quite the conundrum. Hmm. So, you're saying something about laying your cards on the table. More of an opportunity to discuss plainly and candidly. We gods have made a right mess of things. Uh, Marl pipes up. But we have been trying to right them. Well, most of us. And she looks over towards the eight-foot-tall masked man. Uh, who looks over back and just goes, Don't look at me. These fucks freed me. Hmm. I believe this is a opportunity to make things right and let better hands guide the world. Well, we're certainly attempting. There's, uh, as I'm sure you're all aware, our current mission is to save a town from the brink of extinction. Are you talking about Fenter? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Um. I feel like I have more questions, but my memory is terrible. What is the significance of Targus Filgnar? To us? Yeah. Uh, Albina sort of pipes up. Uh, candidly speaking, to us, uh, nothing. Targus Vogna was a warrior of the Rian army, which did not exist when we were gods. Uh, the significance to this commission we found ourselves embroiled in may be another matter entirely, but the significance of one stone giant in the grand scheme of things is very minor. Because the commission themselves have been um, interested in the phenomena of the invader as well. And so just wondering if Targus Filgnar had anything uh, significant to do with that. Maharl sort of pipes up. Well, it seems you're going to cross paths with this commission some point or another. It was also interesting that the body was there in the chambers of Daryl. I believe the giant was a hero to the people, or at least the nobility at the time. A hero's burial, I believe. Lots of sieges broken by that stone giant. I have a question, and forgive me if this has already been asked at some point. Um, what role did the first fire have in all of this? I know... Historically, we've been told that they were fighting against the new gods, but uh, this information that we've been picking up along the way says there might be more to the story. Yes, Marl sort of uh, looks not ashamed, but just sort of like a, like a face of deep regret almost. The 
first fire were simultaneously the reason for some of us gods fighting each other and also the reason that the world still exists. In my mind, they are heroes, people to be respected and remembered. But in our attempt at keeping out of the lives of mortals these days, it seems someone had the idea of slandering their name. And there's not much we can do about that. They, while we gods were fighting and bickering, arguing, crushing everyone beneath our feet. The first fire were using their magics to defend the people. Some of them, most of them. Some capitalized on the situation and attempted to delve into magics they shouldn't. Attaining godhood, lichdom was born of this. There came a point where Magic can go too far, and it was during our fighting that they did. But for the most part, they kept people safe. They used the magic to heal. They used it to rebuild houses, provide shelter, create food and water. And during the Void Era, the greatest of them fought alongside us against the invader. Rizori Novos was one of them. Er Erlok Filkna. Er er Erlok Nohawk. Yeah, there you go. That sort of just uh, points towards you, Riley. Nico Daxian. A few outliers that came to attempt to fix our problems. The way they are, I don't know. But they were good people, mostly. Do you think they were the ones who curated the ten? Most of them would be dead. The airlock, yes, indeed. Years. A little bit too dead to have put any such plan in motion. You said some of them resorted to... I think you might have called it godhood, but you said liches? Yes. The Umbral Era, as it was called, was caused by a decrease in divine worship and more of a self-sustaining arcane use derived from the blood of our titans. It was a untested practice. Some of us thought it to be interesting, maybe the next evolution of the lives of mortals. Some thought it was a threat to the gods themselves, to life, to existence. And because of that, there was a schism between the gods. But the minds of mortals do not work like gods. They can shift on a whim. They can change easily. Some delve into madness. And those with the right intellect and predilection and means can delve far too deep. Lichdom, the ability to create unlife and immortality to an extent by sacrificing souls. This was one of the practices that was developed without our knowledge. Do you know exactly by who? No, no. There was several generations, several lifetimes of scholar after scholar finding, coming to the same conclusion and picking up where someone left off. What mortals lack in lifespan, they make up for in tenacity. I think whoever these new gods are, I think we've had this conversation before amongst the four of us. Uh, whoever the new gods are, I think it has a lot to do with the invaders because I don't know. I think it's really interesting that history has completely written out all of the old gods as well as turned the first fire into terrorists. It's almost no. as if there is. <gasps> Wait! 
What if it's the weird thing that talks through animals? That is... Oh, <laughs> is. that thing in the woods? Yeah. Yeah, what if it's that one? I thought, yeah, that's what it is. Wait, what? what is that? No, what if that weird thing who t that talks through animals is the thing trying to sabotage everything? First told us to give up. Continues to say, oh, you're taking the hard path you are. What if that was the one that fabricated the ten? Like this intelligence that they're talking about? Doesn't it, like, take our blood? Should we be concerned about that? No, I don't think that one took our blood. That was the- that was the Buckhead. Oh, wait, is the that Buckhead and some weird plants. No, we're not. Talking about the thing no, that, that speaks through, like, the flowers and the animals. Yeah. Oh. I think the last place we saw it was on the island with the pillar that fox that was following us had the flower around its neck. I do have a question for the gods. Uh, is is there other beings more powerful than you? Uh, Alina sort of just was, it looked like deep in thought for a while and sort of just looks up surprised. I'm, I'm sorry, what was that? I'm going to put my hand. Can I touch her? Like, is she physically there? Yeah, you just sort of put your hand on her face. She's there. She's like oh. real. I'm not going to touch her face. I'm going to just put my... After Chris asks that question, I'm going to put my hand on her arm and just look at her, like, concerned and just let her know you don't have to answer that. Uh, as you put your hand on her arm, she sort of smiles warmly like a kindly grandmother and sort of just pats your hand twice. <laughs> uh, looks towards uh, uh, you, Chris, and sort of just head up high. In our current state, I believe many creatures could... Uh, could be considered uh, equal. We saw the derelict uh, state of Azazon when we rescued her, so we understand. Yes, Azazon is a somewhat special case. Azazon went from having the worship of hundreds of thousands as the goddess of fire sacrifices sent to volcanoes in her name to silence in 0.5 seconds, we had the privilege of a slow death, a very slow poison, I believe you could equate it to. We've had time to adjust, as is on, had not, but we are, this is an un... unforeseen consequence, but it seems the less worship we have the more mortal we become. So yes, I believe if you uh, stabbed me, it would hurt. <laughs> now that's no fun. I I'll turn at... to Karina and I'll be like, we need to get you back into top shape. I am fine where I am. Thank you. Oh, I was the... talking to Gwina. Oh, okay. Gwina sort of just flares her fins Uh no words spoken, but you, you get the sense, yes, this, this is an agreement. Uh, Alina sort of continues a little bit. I am privileged to have a small, basic sense of worship from some of the citizens, citizens, citizenry of Naset. Mahal here has almost no one anymore, but she seems to be fine, and Mahal smiles and nods. And uh, Marhal sort of just goes, it is a somewhat freeing feeling, not being tied down by worship or prayers. Like the wind. It is in some ways I can understand what mortal life is like now. I think uh, no one can, can deny that Chaos will always be there. Uh, a stretchy hand sort of like wraps around you twice, Chris, and then holds out a hand for a high five. I high five. Yeah, and now the, the alley sort of just does, does two finger guns. That's right, fuckers. When everyone's dead, including you, I'll still be here. <laughs> 
Wait, it's another question. I think uh, preparing for this fight, we've asked ourselves this a few times. I know Merrick is working with a god as well. Um, are there other champions out there that we could maybe find and get into contact with? Because this is... We don't really know what we're getting ourselves into in terms of a eventual battle between us and the enemy. Um, we're trying to prepare for that. And if we could have as much uh, assistance as possible, that would be great. Are there any other champions anywhere? Uh, Maharal sort of looks towards you. Other gods, yes. Champions is hard to say. The other gods certainly do exist. I've come across a few in my time. The goddess of natural disasters is currently wandering somewhere in Thain. If you see her run, she is a a wild spirit. But not all gods seem to share mine or Linus or Aquinas mindsets and sort of looks towards Eda Ali just sort of excusing <laughs> him from the trifecta. I believe the three of us have been until recently working on our own ends to protect the rest of the world in whatever ways we could. I've been enjoying myself in the wilderness, but also hunting down what remnants of corrupted still remain. Uh, Lena sort of goes, and I've been researching and finding means of any weaknesses, any weak points we could exploit. It wasn't until the four of you banded together and by pure happenstance, we happened to choose the right four individuals. Uh, Maharal continues. That being said, not all gods share those goals. Some gods are content as they are. Some gods actively wish to sow destruction when they can and looks towards Eda Ellie again. <laughs> There's another at large as well, I'm just, as I'm sure you know. Perhaps even more dangerous than this weirdo. Ah, yeah. So that begs the question. If a chem is to get in our way, how do we dispose of him? Do we just hit him really hard? Elena sort of just looks towards Riley. A chem is a... In some ways, unfortunate, a chem is likely the strongest of us old gods now. Oh. Because while they're maybe scholars, they may be hunters, and we old gods can absorb some essence of them. Ever since there have been two people, there have always been murder and killing and bloodshed and hatred, all of which Akem embodies. I can only guess to what Akem's goals are. I could be wrong. I have been in the past. But I believe Akem's goals is to... He's... A strange one. I do not agree with his methods, but he is currently the most powerful of us gods. Old gods, at the very least. But he was never so hands-on until after the invader. Always conniving and scheming like he is now. I believe he's trying to become powerful enough to defeat the invader himself. A terrifying thought, which may pose an even bigger problem after the invader is gone. Exactly my thoughts. It's well and good that he could dispose of it himself, but then what? Now you have a god of murder that is about as equally powerful as a new god. An issue, certainly. And it is unfortunate that I believe that is a sound plan. At least it would work. Oh boy. So. And I'm 
thinking about the commission and them taking targets Filgnar, who is a stone giant and a war hero. It seems like they're and they're we know that some of their members are delving into necromancy. It seems that maybe perhaps uh, Targus Filgnar is a type of weapon that they want to use. If one was to use necromancy to revive the dead, that would be certainly a use for it. Especially with a body like Targus Filgnar. Especially with high enough necromancy that level of undeath could even retain memories and skills from the past life so what exactly is the problem with having Targus Filknar cheat to death then that seems like a net positive he was a hero yeah which means like I'm just thinking that perhaps maybe the commission is on the good side Maybe they're there. They can be a useful ally if they're doing that sort of thing. Hmm. Oh, yeah, isn't that another pressing issue? We need to speak of Tutanin again. Did we for what? Make oh, sure you needed to. Yeah, I would like yeah. to keep some tabs on him. Mm, the world is complex. I never imagined any of this would be happening when I left me village. Yeah, there's a lot happening right now. You said, um, I don't know if it was, uh, this is out of character, obviously. I don't know which one of the goddesses it was that was saying it. Um, there are still worshippers of one of the gods in our set. That's yours, is it not? Was it only? I guess I'll check with Alina. I'll I'll clarify. She said someone still worshipped in our set. Yes. Uh, three of us. Fairly. Narset is a. Not a backwards. It is a old civilization. I dare say they are the. Some of the only civilizations to somewhat retain their old world counterparts. So, the three gods worshipped in Narset, at least in small cults, is myself as a goddess of knowledge. That is something they covet quite deeply. The, the hanged head, I believe, is... Well, you've met the god once. Yes, once. Already. The bucket. The... Oh, in the woods. That is correct. That is a... The last one is a... A old god of dragons by the name of oh. Dressalden. Oh. That's cool. The first dragon, amongst the first at least, according to him. We don't converse... We are worshipped individually. Huh. Do we... Did we learn who his Merix was? The weird, like, mantis thing? Yeah. The vengeance. God. There was a name I completely forgot. I wrote it down somewhere. Okay, we don't have to worry about That's... That, that would be Iphitax. God mm. of... Blood, vengeance, death. Lots of similar domains, but... Primarily the vengeance part. I don't believe Iphidax has any goals other than to sow more vengeance. <laughs> Actually, that could work to our advantage a wee bit. If we could direct people towards him instead of Akem, they have similar domains. What about uh, directing <laughs> people to us? Chaos. Not Chris's, but yeah, I would say like, or just anything else. Uh, Edda Ellie is currently dabbing in both directions, going chaos, chaos, <laughs> chaos. Yes, yes. Power, power. <laughs> power, power. <laughs> I heard that. 
Uh, my attempts to convince people that there's a fish god it seems to be rather fruitlessness. Fru fruitless? Fruitless, that's the word, yes. Um, perhaps rather than... Because it's just belief alone, right? I could just spread the tale of the Gwina as a legendary... Uh, as a legend, rather. Um, the way it reached my ears to begin with. Maybe that would be more effective. Well, the thing is, is that people uh, need to believe it. Do people believe legends? I did. Yule did. I mean, you knew I it believed to be you, truth, I you believed didn't think you it was a goddess. That you believed. <laughs> I mean, we're legends, and I think people are believing us. I don't know what I would do with godhood. I don't think I want that. I think there's a difference between infamy and legendary status. There is also a difference in believing a legend and believing a god. So my plan wouldn't work. It would have differing effects. It would be not a drink of water, but drops. I think... It's always a good place to start, especially considering my previous efforts haven't done anything. I think one of the stronger things we can do to get more people on our side faster is to expose the new gods for being whoever or whatever they are, if they are related to the invaders. Um, because once it's in everyone's faces and it's undeniable, it won't be very hard to, I think, return the old gods to the rightful places. Convincing the high priests that their gods are fabricated oh boy I can already hear the mouthful I'd get from uh, Ungvar and see that's another thing is that it's, it's not that they're even like there's still something there you know if we just don't know who it actually is how do we even look into this We've been to all of the ten. We've done our research, and yet there's nothing. I think we need to find more out about the invaders. However, we do that. Hmm. Because I think the big chunk, like the big piece of the puzzle we're missing, is somewhere between the invaders and the new gods. Perhaps the new gods are the invaders. Some intelligent enough to split off and sow some sort of legend enough. That's a huge task, though. How did they manage to erase all the old gods completely? Well, yeah, that's a good question. And it had to have been through word of mouth or something, because it didn't reach Narset. Nobody goes to Narset. Green has been trapped by a shark, so that's one explanation. But what about the rest of you? I believe we ex well, I explained earlier that it was better to keep a lot of what happened in the past in the dark. Okay, so there's our explanation. They did the the new gods didn't do anything. They just exist now. So how did they do that? Could it be that they're already existing gods that just maybe took a new name? No, if the god takes a new name, new identity, that becomes a new god. Do you believe be they're real gods? Oh, yes. They certainly have influence and control over the realm much stronger than we old gods did. We shared that power, but these ten New gods seem to control much more of the domain than we did, but they do it with... There's enough of them and few enough of them to balance each other out. Whoever installed these new gods knew how this worship system worked. See, that's what rubs me the wrong way. Like, these gods were, like, curated. <laughs> I don't like that. 
And this is just convincing me further that it's the weird thing that talks through plants and animals. D right. Does anybody here know about what that could be? Uh, Elvina starts flipping through books. Uh, I feel like just... Harl would have some experience with it, wouldn't she? Like being like, all about forests. This is the only place we've encountered it so far, right? Is in the wild. In the wild. Yeah, yeah. While Lynn is flipping through books trying to find uh, information and just like bookmarking stuff, like no, no, and it's like sort of scribbling stuff down, just looking through shit. Maharl just goes, "I have a suspicion," uh, and Lynn just stops and just looks up, just like, "Oh, okay." Uh, <laughs> one of the first fire was a a elven druid by the name of Arena Gideofin. Now the the lifespans of elves aren't terribly long, somewhere in fifty years, but I believe she is amongst the first druids to become intertwined with nature itself. In doing so would elongate your life. I know of some fates of the first fire. I've only recently learned of Rosori Novos, Aerolock, Nohag. The good accent, I'm not sure, but Ermig Dave and I have no I have no record of what happened to her after the Void Era. Uh, Lynn starts flipping through books and Nor I. See that's oh that feels like a very big piece of the puzzle. Why is somebody in the first fire trying to stop us from stopping the invaders? Well, I doubt it's some sort of alliance. Because why even be part of the first fire to begin Maybe with? Maybe they're pessimistic because of what happened to them. Maybe they're well, worried that we would undo something that they did. In which case, be honest about that. Yeah. If keeping things the way they are in terms of, like, the new gods is in the best interest of, you know, society, I can keep an open mind to that. Even if the old gods agree that the new gods are doing a better job. I'm open-minded to the new gods. I'm not open-minded to the Black Pillars. And so if the two have much to do with each other, that's, uh, it's very alarming. This, this is a question for the old gods. Um... In your prime time of power, how would you have, um, what would have been ways that a mortal could gain audience with gods like you? Uh, Edda Ellie, for the first time in a while, has something meaningful to say. Well, for me, personally, I don't know about the rest of you, but you gotta do something real fucking spectacular. Like, blow up an orphanage using nothing but piles of shit in a match. You know, something like that. Do something that I like, to the point that it's almost crazy. In fact, go full crazy. Uh, Maharl sort of pipes up. I hate to admit it, but yes, actually. What? The no. <laughs> The, the idea of it, not the act, the perform an act that is invocative of our domain, a legendarily heroic act, at least for me, something that is certainly not normal, but extraordinary. Catch our attention. We have a lot of, uh, we used to have our attention in a lot of places at once. Telling me we need to go viral. <laughs> yeah, we need to. If we are to talk with the new gods, we probably would have to do something that would uh, impress them. So who's it's the most likely the guy? If that doesn't impress Ebel, nothing will. Listen, we're about to head to uh, Sant eventually. The whole thing with. 
pure soul dogma and sant is that what they're doing is genocide. I don't think if Len is honestly the goddess of light and purity and whatever the fuck, I don't think killing innocent people is in her best interest. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe if we're able to do something about pure soul dogma, maybe she'll. And learn. furthermore, if the ten are indeed spawned from the invader, so are the tieflings. So why then? Would they want to commit tiefling genocide? That seems counterproductive. That's true. I want to know how they made a tiefling. Yeah, that one doesn't really add up in my brain thing, but it doesn't really need to. It proves that there are facets of the enemy that can be turned into allies, but how much we do... That's another thing. Is error here with us? I think he is actually. He's always with us. I think I think he stuffed him in the bag of holding and never really returned him to his rightful spot. Who is this? Error. Oh. We have a bit of an outlier with us. You forgot your son. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's been like three months in real time. <laughs> and we also have Floomph. Oh well, that's not an invader. Oh, yeah, that's just that's always on, like, strange like, things from a different world. Except in combat, where I never mention he goes in a bag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this strange circular construct that I'm sure some of you are aware of. Uh, anything on it? Is is does it differ from the other one somehow? It it seems benevolent. Uh, it is uh, obsessed with the moon, though. Yeah, uh, Alina sort of pipes up going through her, uh, just like pulling out a separate book that's like a like a slightly smaller book, but it's like blue bound and sort of shows you, Riley, and everyone else just flips through it. It is a uh, extensive diagram of like various like robotic like component and stuff and it's like apparatus bullshit and just like flipping through it. I've done a few studies on the inner workings of these little balls. These little uh, constructs. It's, we have nothing. I've never seen anything quite as advanced as this. I'm working on piecing together parts of it, but from the several dozen that I've come across scavenged, pulled apart, none of them have felt a motion like that one does. Certainly an outlier. Hmm. Is Elena just like pulling these books out of her her cape, her robe? Yeah, <laughs> like they're huge books. It was like it's, it's so like a cute. it's a cape of holding, if you will. <laughs> so cute. Then there should be another question: the separate existence. I assume that's the moon. Yes. Yes. How does one get there? We don't know. I don't know. I've been trying to know. Rizori Novos exploded, and in doing so, it somehow ended the Void Era. It split the moon into two phases. One has become two, somehow. And currently, the one that we have is a benign rock floating in the sky and the other one shoots black glass. If I had more material to study, if I had access to Zori Novos, I might have an answer for you. But that is just as big as mystery to you as it is to me. And believe me, I've been trying to solve it for going on 2,000 years now. So that's another good question, then. How is it that you interact with the material plane we exist on? Do you just phase into it? Have a little jaunt and then see what you can uh, get from that? Or is there a different process? I can, but I prefer not to. I'm not an outdoorsy person like Mahal or Gwina or that one. Um, <laughs> I have scouts and I have proxies. I have... Some trusted individuals within Nasset. Few. I have zero. 
I have my owls, and she just pulls out a whole owl from under her cloak cape. Uh, <laughs> a whole owl? whole owl. So it goes, who, and then it goes back to the cape. Uh, <laughs> when she says my name, I'm going to put my hand out and get a high five real quick. Uh, she, she slaps back. <laughs> I have enough worship to build my own little demi-plane, which I conduct all my experiments and research in. Zero can attest. Hmm. Circling back to the the flower thing that's happening, if uh, Mahal is tying it to this member of the first fire, I'm thinking, this is just a theory, uh, based on what we know so far. I'm thinking maybe some members of the first fire defected and that's why Rosori Novos is trapped because maybe she did not want to do what they were doing or she was trying to stop them from whatever whatever they were doing and... Or they were trying to stop her. No, because I think what she was doing was helpful and she was saving people. They stopped her and like... Elena mentioned some of them wanted more than they had and they, they tried to achieve becoming a lich or even becoming gods. I wonder if some of them did achieve that. They defected from the first fire. They got rid of anyone that was in their way, like Rosuri, and now they're the, the ten that we know them to be. But they must have negotiated or something with the invaders to do this because they're working with the pillars and us trying to break the pillars is something that is conflicting with their goals well we don't yet know if uh this first fighter member is at all related to the 10 yet we still need to figure that out yeah that's true it could just be a remnant of a long past time trying not to have the same mistake repeat but what this one doesn't understand and apparently hasn't observed enough of are our deeds how many of the enemy have we taken out so far what the big shark the things in the underdark the things in the forest oh that's another thing that forge I believe that uh, belonged to an old god as well Oh, uh, the one that we got our upgrades in? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Do you think maybe we gathered in sites where the old gods were most worshipped before? Because re- if you recall, the murals in the, in the Underdark told a story. Maybe that's the connecting piece. What does anybody here know what the dwarves of Tetscat were doing millennia ago? Uh, Alina goes flipping through pages, a separate book. This one older, <laughs> dustier. Uh, uh, ah, yes. They... I believe you're correct. They began to worship the black obelisks as... Signs from gods, at least a small subsection of the dwarves that worshipped the stars. And when something fell from the stars, they took it as a sign. And it seems the smarter, more intellectual of the corrupted and apparatus abused this trust and worship. I wonder if we explored hard enough. I know we've been there many times now. Um, if there's any uh, of those black obelisks in Obethus, specifically near or in the Hall of the Ten. You know, I could check. I also, now that we're breaking everything down, I don't remember his name. I have it written down somewhere. The man who was... Uh, who commissioned that spider 
in Obethus that was making people crazy. He was like a priest or something. I want to speak to him because whenever we found of his, the journals or whatever, it had something to do with the first fire, right? That's true. What, weren't those journals actually defacing the first fire? I don't know if they were defacing it so much as like just documenting their work or something like that. I, do we still have those? We should still have those, right? I think so. I think I vaguely remember the contents. That's um, Sonia. We need to go to not I miss. Yeah, it's Fairies it's it, it was it was books based around yeah the first fire. Yeah. Um, some of them mentioned some other characters. The one that uh, I don't remember what the priest's name was, but like he was researching a dude named uh, I first remember uh, named Fool Fool Vril, I believe. Um, who was working on these little uh, metal tablets, these stone tablets that when you ring them, they cause different various enchantment effects. Um, and they're still around, seemingly. They're just kicking around. Uh, yeah, and Elvina sort of just pipes up. I, I believe Thulvril was one of the uh, aforementioned ones that took it too far type of members. Oh, great. Simon, did you say he was worshipping him? No, he was researching him. Like, like looking for, like, he was seemingly looking at the effects of those little tablets. Okay, so it could just be that he was trying to utilize the, the first fire magic. There is also Aralak Nohog, uh, which is interesting, like, uh, reading his... Um, being in the four faces of the first fire that uh it says he's likely the was a leader of the seaborn insurrection against the ten and mostly came to blows with Abel. if that's true then maybe the ten are the enemy queen i he was your champion. Did he ever come to blows with somebody named Ebel? Or something adjacent to that? No. The Ten did not exist in our time. Everlock Nohark lived and died by my fin. That's what I thought. So this... Is just straight up not true. How much of how much else of this is not true? I just I have a suspicion the new gods are members of the first fire. Previous members that and betrayed the old ones. Yeah, and they had to get rid of the other members of the first fire because these are the only other mages that are as powerful as them that would be a threat to their dominance but I'm, i want to figure out why the fuck they're helping the invaders there's still far too much we don't know i guess to be fair the invaders and the new gods would have this common enemy what the first fire no, 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 no. If the first fire is the new gods, they, they are the new gods, right? The, the defectors. Right. So the new gods and the invaders would have this common enemy of the old gods. That's why they helped each other erase everything. So even if they're not working directly with each other, they are both doing their part to suppress the old gods. So even if... So what position does that put us in? Maybe we should try to get what did uh what's the word Chris use? Gain audience with the new gods. Which which one do you think would be the most easiest to gain audience is, with? Is that really a smart move though? If we if we gain audience with one of those gods and we're like, hey, by the way, uh don't like what you're doing here, wouldn't they just kill us on the spot? That's fair. We need some sort of other inside force. I'm going to turn to Elena and ask her, so can anyone just become a god? 
Theoretically, yes. I do not know of any examples of a living mortal becoming or achieving godhood in the sense that we have many of the gods that I'm aware of that were born from worship, but theoretically, if one mortal was to be worshipped as a god, then yes. It would make sense to me that the first fire might have taken on these new names and pretended to be gods because they very perfectly curated these gods. They're not like the old gods that are people in the way that they have flaws and personality and, and goals and ambitions. These other gods are just very... All-encompassing. Yeah. No one could naturally be that way, so it makes sense that if the first fire didn't design them to be this way, maybe the invaders did. I don't think Zal knew anything about that either. I think we need to find... I know we've discussed earlier, and it, it is a very large task, but I want to try to work a bit harder to find Rosary Novos. I think that should be next on our to-do list as well. It's also... There's a reason they won't let us find her. What was that, Chris? The, um... What is it? The tablets of a bygone age, that one. Seems interesting because it mentions Throughville and how those um, tablets, uh, you know, capture souls and, uh, you know, kind of destroys them and that sort of thing. So sacrifice a soul to destroy another, that sort of thing. You are referring to the Tablet of Spite. Yeah. The tablets are more of a stepping stone in the development of modern magics. Mages, as you know them, ones that study magic and the, the essence of the arcane, or are born with it, or make packs with those who understand it. It was not... It was not in existence at the time, so these tablets served as a somewhat substitute for them. Instrumental, instrumental in creating modern magic, but unpredictable at times, and sometimes evil, like that aforementioned tablet. This is steering a little bit off course. However, I am curious. Was your influence palpable within that a dimension we were sent to not long ago? Oh yeah, with the phone. <laughs> I guess I don't know it to be a phone, that, that thing I stole. I don't know which dimension you are speaking of. I think, okay, yeah, it was just us then. Um, this is going to sound absolutely insane, but when we found, um, what was the pilot's name again? Oh, Captain God. Evandra. Yeah, Evandra. When we found Evandra on the island crashed, um, before we were even able to speak a word to her, we were whisked off to some strange alternate timeline? where people were dressed strangely and had these very advanced gadgets and set us up to play games for prizes. <laughs> Alina's face sort of just, like, looks confused. By my vision, you landed on the island south of the dog and resumed your conversation with Captain Avandra, albeit with great confusion. Yeah, so the, the confusion part was the aftermath of us returning. Really? I did not see such an occurrence. 
Riley, can I grab that uh, thing I gave you? What did Zero give me again? The iPhone. <laughs> you gave me that? Yeah, because I didn't want anyone to get a hold of it. And my perception sucks. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, here you go. I'm going to pass it to Alina. 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 We, uh, we got this there. She sort of takes it and uh, starts pressing the buttons. The battery's dead. Um, oh. Which is sort of uh, just looking it over just very weirdly. And as she sort of just holds her palm up and the phone begins to float and sort of just disassemble itself into all of its base components. And she sort of just looks it over. Hmm. Not magical. It is a similar type of construction to the apparatus, though it is different. Less advanced, I'd say. The phone sort of reassembles itself and just sort of hands it back to you, Zara. I toss it to Riley. All right, back in we go. Uh, I do have a question about Hegina Kalo Fonada. Uh, in the book Relics of the Ancients, it says that this person was uh, very devout and like like the stories claim that her abilities came from the gods. Um, Harlser just chuckles. <laughs> uh, yes, she was one of my chosen for a while. I admired her determination, ability to, cr to cross wastes. I believe she had a, a scarf that I found in one of the aspects of creation. Allowed her to control the wind somewhat. Is that what, um, the relic that we found, an aspect of creation? Yes, the volcano stone, as it's been called. That one was uh -huh. associated with fire. This one was with wind. Aspect of creation. So is that little uh, relic that we got, uh, the other one at the beginning, the start of the campaign. Oh, you that... mean this thing? And then Riley will take out the little like trinket. The, the strange trinket, the first handout I've, ha I've made since the... the, the... <laughs> Uh, yeah, what is this thing, anyway? That is a memory stone. It is related to those tablets. The Tablet of Spite, the ones that Thulvril was experimenting with. It is in the same vein of magic. It will hold a, a moment in time to be viewed over and over again, provided to have the right equipment. Equipment? What kind of equipment would we need? A focus of a kind. The top symbol is circular with the spirals, is representing sight. The equipment will tap into that to allow you to see into the memory it contains while the symbol below it uh, symbolizes time and its flow, which by viewing through the tablet, through the focus, it will allow you to be somewhat transported back to the time it was imprinted on. Didn't we find somebody with technology for that in Sylnia, I thought? Like somewhere at the... Um... The academy, I thought we found somebody that had the ability to use this trinket and let us like play whatever was on there. Really? I thought so. Am I tripping? Is it worth taking a pit stop to Sylnia then? I could be lying to you, don't listen to me. 
Hmm. Simon, confirm or deny. <laughs> there's there's something said about uh, this type of uh, this type of study being done at Silmia. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, they, I think they mentioned these very uh, the, the, like it was a book somewhere. I think it, had, it, it mentioned pretty much the same item. And I think uh, the book, yeah, the book, uh, yeah, it, it was written by someone in Sonia about a tablet that would show, like, memories of someone. And, like, the memory you saw was, like, a child's first steps, I think. Oh, I remember reading that. that How did we not put two and two together? The tablets of a bygone age? Is that I believe so. Yeah, full yeah. So they are connected. Well, in that case, if this, if this bygone age is anything to go by, this tablet could actually be pretty important. Um, the missing piece, perhaps. We've uh, oh, I was about to say, where did we see another one? We saw another one in the uh, the, the ruins and uh, the Silverwood when we got our. Hothios' vessels in the first place. Our options were money, weapons, or a trinket. That could have been knowledge. Shit. <laughs> it's also the Black Beck Quarry. Which uh, certain crystals were found. Now, hold on a second. Chaos God. Yeah. How do we... Are, are those items still in your prison? I don't fucking know. I didn't build it. <laughs> These motherfuckers build it. Keep me contained. Keep me down. Contained by the system. Yeah, down yeah, with yeah, the system. Yeah, yeah, down with the system, be, whatever, whatever. <laughs> we gotta be free. That's why I like you, Chris. Hmm, that didn't answer much. Well, didn't Monty have some kind of power in there, too? Do you think Monty could help us out? Wasn't he a follower? I think Monty's dead. <laughs> has been so for a too, while. Man. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think he's <laughs> dead, dead now. Like so a little parasite leeching off my power, seeing alive. No, I'm not dead. I don't know what's going on. So does that mean the place is, like, completely just... I don't fucking know! I'm not talking not to you. Do you think that place is just the face stretches towards you, like right in front of you, and just stays like in your in your vision at all times? That's fine. I, just, I keep I keep eye contact with him when I speak to Riley, and I'm like, do you think that place? Do you think that place is maybe unguarded now? We killed. I don't know. <laughs> is it a mad face? I get closer to his face and say, "Yeah, I'm not talking to you." He headbutts you. Hard. <laughs> Pretty hard, but it doesn't really hurt. Like it, it, like the it does, it's not it's less of a headbutt and more like the face like the face punches you because his neck cranes towards you, um, and as you do you you feel your body almost become like jelly and you just like sort of like turn it like it's like you're boneless for a little bit but then you just get stand you just stand back up like everything's right like normal. Ew, yeah, I like my tieflings, uh, how I like my pizza. <laughs> <laughs> boneless. Uh, and then it's sort of and then it's sort of just like. Angrily steps up on the chair that you're on, like to be like head high with you. And Ellie, I must insist you must keep your hands off my chosen. <laughs> and Ellie goes, I didn't keep my hands. I used my face. <laughs> I'm, like, hide, I'm like hiding behind Elena, like I just told on my brother and <laughs> my mom. <laughs> just, I'm just smirking at, <laughs> at Ellie and Ellie. And so that's another option. <laughs> we can loot his prison at some point, or at least try to. I don't know how we're going to get past those magic locks, but it's probably possible. We were like level 4 back then, we can handle it. Yeah, bro, we're like level 16 now, so like we're like 4 times as strong. What other gods had prisons?
Ma yes. A chem, right? No. The death is a very normal process of mortality. It was a chem stayed in his lane. Give or take. Stayed in his lane. Yes, did you not use bicycle lanes? Uh, <laughs> Ed Ellie proved a problem to the rest of us for a while. It was difficult to become... To be a god when constantly your followers and worshippers were drowned, turned to snakes, or stabbed. <laughs> it's not Riley really laughing. Noise. Snakes can be fun. That's that's the uh, the thing, Chris. Can be. You need to know how to use them. I'm trying to think if there's any other questions before we leave. Here's Jenna, a question. Oh yeah, I guess Jenna should speak. Oh, I wasn't saying anything. Oh, I'm just wondering if you have anything to say. I'm also struggling. I feel like you guys covered it. I don't know, literally any time I was thinking, I'm like, someone said it. Then here's a question. Do you have questions for us? Ooh. It's like an interview. <laughs> uh, Aluna sort of speaks up. Less of a question, more of a request. What's up? What's good? I believe we... I believe you're on the right track that this island that Rosori Novos is important. I believe finding it is, for me personally, priority number one. We, you and I both, mortal zodiacs, gods alike, have been grasping at straws for the gods for centuries. If this island turns out fruitful for answers. I believe it could be the key to finding a weakness or at least a temporary or permanent solution to the invader. While it is benign and for now harmless, we do not know for how long. It's clear something stirs. We've seen it with our own eyes. And that is exactly what I am fearful of. In the meantime, I believe I will try to search for this missing link. In the meantime, uh, Maharal sort of raises a hand slightly sheepishly. A request from me as well. While it is Good to have champions that we can depend on. I have seen firsthand that it is not always enough. So I extend to the rest of you the task I extended to dear Jana here. And she sort of puts her hands on your shoulder, shoulders, Jana. They're warm as they sort of just give you like almost like a slight shoulder massage. <laughs> VIP trip, and you're getting you're getting a back rub by a god. Um, <laughs> uh, Maharal sort of speaks up. Find allies, ones you can trust, ones that have strength, whether individually or through power, through control. Governments, armies, champions. I believe your four corners, if they were willing, would do well as well. Find something to bind all this chaos together. It looks at Edda Ellie. Like a, like a dirty look. Edda Ellie grows a third middle finger and like gives it to her. <laughs> uh, he's just been holding it up. <laughs> yeah, he's been <laughs> are, the, are the fingers growing in size? They are. <laughs> Like, like every six seconds it grows like an inch and now they're, they're roughly like a meter long <laughs> like, like, like a mushroom just growing like vertically uh Maharal just goes there is 
violence, there's killing, there's hatred, there's misunderstandings, there's ignorance. And if the invader returns, everything is dust. So my request is to find a way to bring everyone together under a unified cause. It'll be difficult, not everyone will agree. Some may be under conditions, but you four, while powerful, cannot do all the fighting yourselves. If the invader wakes up, it will be continent-wide. Hmm. How, many, how many world leaders have we spoken to? We spoke to the president of Altus. S Right. And then we also fucked over <laughs> the Orbiter. <laughs> it's fine. Word leaders are a good start. They would be instrumental. They would help spread the word fast, but that's not the only means. I think uh, the one in Altus is our best bet to start. He seemed more trustworthy, and he, they already know us. Certainly from that level, yes. But I believe that our, our current track, saving an entire town of Fentu, is also another great start, as it has, uh, you know, an entire peoples behind us. I, while I agree with you, I don't feel right about volunteering the tieflings. To volunteering? They don't have a choice. It's going to come to them whether they like it or not. I know, but to... I don't know, I... There's a lot of people in this world. Not every woman, man, and child is going to take up in arms. Not everyone's prepared to do that. Not everyone should have to do that. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to want to hide, and they're going to want to stay safe while the heroes do the work. And Isn't that equally as important, letting them know they need to hide? I, I mean, yeah, it just sounds like you're saying they're going to be on our team. I, I, I think... Uh... Rebecca is gonna be a prodigy of chaos. I hate that. They're children, though. Getting them prepared is well and good, but if the time comes where we need to fight and they're not, you know, ready yet, we can't have them on the front lines. Because we don't know what our timeline is. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen 20 years from now. I think as we seem to be the first people in a long time that are getting close enough to finding out what's going on, it'll be sooner than later. That seems likely. Especially because, you know, the enemy stirs. So, here's another question. In all your searching, do you know where any other black pillars are? Elena sort of just gives a solemn nod. Uh, Maharaj goes, If I've seen the Black Pillar, I have destroyed it. Mm. In that case, where have you not checked? I can only be so many places at once. I still walk on two feet. I've checked most of the mainland. Nosset is difficult to get into these days. Even for you? Even for me. I can walk through woods very well. Desert is nice, but it's not my strong, my strongest suit. Also, if I do not have permission, they'll still shoot at me. And in your current state, not fun. It would still take a while to bring me down, but it is certainly less enjoyable than it seems. Well, I have a, a harrowing thought. If Gwina has been trapped here for a while, yeah? And that shark's been presiding, who's to say there aren't spires underground? Or under underwater, rather. Uh, Gwina sort of ephemerally speaks in all your heads. The shark chased me 
from the void era, hunting me, acquiring my scent, my blood. It has been in the lake for a long time. I have not felt any pillars within the fingers nor the palm. I cannot say the same for the surrounding seas. There has to be, because what's his name? Zal? He, he got corrupted, that's right. Yeah. And I mean, the shark had to get it from somewhere. That's true as well. Um... What is... It seems like the invader wants something with divine energy. Since the in their ship that we encountered, they had Azazon captured within it. Alvinus sort of goes, Yes, I believe those ships are something like experiments or something akin to testing, prodding. They are what creates biospawn. Usually, they house apparatus. And there are those that do not fall under the three arms of the invader, but simply follow it, much like the dwarves, loyal to the invader, that retain some notion of their mind. It is not entirely unfeasible that they could be trying to harness divine energy. Simon. Yeah. Um, did I th I'm struggling to remember if I recall this correctly. You told me when I like first saw Maharo that like she was a part of like that group I traveled with before. Uh. Or no. That that was that was a dream state. Okay. It was a okay. yeah. Was sort of that was living summons in my memory. No. Okay. Ignored. Yeah, it, it it was that moment was a memory that you had, but Mahara was not there. Okay, got it. Yeah, thank you. There is another thing. The gnomes of the deep, they do not worship gods; they worship prime elementals. Arl goes. Ah, yes, they do. The elementals were created from, well, as a means of emergency, a weapon. They were, when the invader attacked, we had very little power ourselves. So we attempted to create titans quickly, and the prime elementals were a combination, a result of those attempts. They were under under our control while we still resided in godhood, but these days they are more animal than anything. Forces of nature. It is unsurprising that civilizations that do not know the origins of these creatures would view them as gods. But all, all four live, as far as I'm aware. And we know where one of them is. You do. Dire Mammoth, I think. The Argent Mountain. And uh, Maharal sort of just gives you a harder back rub and sort of just looks you warmly in the eyes. If you are able to uh, tame it and almost, almost invasively another voice sort of echoes as she says that, that says, hunt it. It would be a great ally, and when she says ally, you hear a separate voice, a deeper voice, and feeling a somewhat familiar voice, asset to you. It's... Wait, can you say that phrase again? I don't think I understood what just happened. So when she says, she says, when I you hear something out like 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 yeah. a, I'll say like a whisper or something. Yeah. 
Can yeah, only so, so Jenna hear it? Can everyone hear it? Only you could hear this one. Okay. So what, what she she says uh, when when you tame it, and when she says tame it, like in like a second voice, a uh, second voice almost layers over top of it that says hunt it. Uh, yeah, it's, she says when you tame it, uh, slash hunt it, uh, it will be a great ally slash asset for you. And she continues slightly more. It's it's friendship, and then that layered voice over top of it. Power will be a great boon to our cause. Janet will just kind of nod. Seems our path is intrinsically linked back to Thane once more. We should probably make sure the situation in Sant is taken care of and then make way back. Maybe hit up Sylnia on the way about that relic or the trinket. It'd be a small pit stop, I suppose. I'm going to try to keep in contact with Yancy every other day so we can see when the food's actually ready, but we do have some time to kill. How much time has passed, Simon, since we spoke to him? Uh, a few days. Okay. Oh, like a right. day, also, actually. Sorry, just because we went over so much in a short time frame, why am I killing the mammoth? You don't know. Okay. You just heard the voice. It's a somewhat familiar voice you've heard in other dreams you've had. Oh, so it wasn't even uh, Maharl's voice. No. Oh, that's spooky. Oh, oh, wait then. Yeah, so she 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 said, she said, uh, tame it. The other voice was. Hunted. But when did you say I heard the other voice? Like, I've heard this voice before. In what context? Yeah. Uh, in the various dreams that gave you a cool tattoo that can turn into a dagger. The, uh, the, the, the big old wolf in the woods. Hmm. Got it. Thank you. There is one more thorn in our side, as I'm sure you're aware. Silverwind. There's something that concerns me. Project Thunderhead. Is there any information on that? Sadly, the information that I've been gathering retained mostly to the invader and anything related to it. The while regrettable criminal enterprises of the Silverwind Trading Company were respectfully under my scope. Well, I guess it's a positive that they're not related. <laughs> that would suck. Certainly, I don't believe that Silverwind is working with the enemy. It's possible since they're hoarding all this arcanium, that they're trying to build a weapon to dis... Uh, to... What's the word? I'll just go with decimate them as well. We need to get every bit of information we can, and that's why I need to have me a chat with Tannen. It, it, isn't there... Um, little conflicts happening with Cowboy recently? What, with the Reese? Yeah. Marl sort of goes, I believe you are referring to the apparent dissolution of their alliance. They had an alliance, the three factions that make up most of Kabe against the <laughs> war in Rias, the Crucible War, you may have heard of it. Uh, it's been 30 or so years since the end of that war, and that's Alliance is beginning to strain as all three of those factions are culturally different, philosophically different. 
They never liked each other. So in essence, Calbe could split in three at any time. Again, yes. They had a history of civil war. If you can find a way to renew this alliance and maybe turn them to your side, a country full of warriors would be pretty good to have on our side. Isn't Deirdre over there right now? I think she's probably in another realm. Yeah, I thought she was going to the... What's it called? Shadowfell? I think oh, that happened right. right no, that that happened a few days ago, didn't it? That's right. Hmm. If uh, we want to breach any of you again, if we have any additional questions, how would we go about doing that? Uh, Gwina talks in all your heads. Unfortunately, in this configuration, you cannot. This meeting is only possible with condensed, built-up, reserved worship. My worship, which your patrons are currently borrowing. Once you leave the confines of my cave, it will be private within your heads once more. That's fine. Then one more request from me. Full transparency both ways. You're uh, talking to the gods? Yeah. They sort of just look to each other, most of them, even the big fish eyes of Gwina. It is in, not in our nature to change easily, but we may try. That is all I could ask, that. One request from me to you, Chosen. Hello. When possible, spread my name. I wish to have a facsimile of my power back when the world remembered who the seas belonged to. I would wish to return the wrath invoked upon me by the invader. Gwina on the front lines again. I would love to see that. I'll do my part as I always have been. And Ellie sort of just slams three fists on the table. Request from me. Take a break. Holy shit, you've been running yourselves ragged for the past month. We've been flying on a dragon for the past month. I don't know what you're talking about. Is it on the new time? Downtime. Go fish for, I don't know, weeks, years. I don't give a shit. Do something you enjoy. Because work fucking sucks. And all I've been hearing in this man's brain since I've been kicking around in it is, we should go do this. We should go do that. We have to hurry here. <laughs> Read a book. Read a book, fuck, drink, I don't care. Just relax. Can't save the world when you're stressed and high strung now, can you? I think the insane man has a point. We need to find an opportunity to... Yep. Yeah. Gotta just sit down and... Uh read or study <laughs> or hey, it's been so long you've forgotten what you like to do <laughs> exactly can't read
think that might be it then. For now. We've got our various missions. We've got the backing of the old gods themselves. I think we could probably get through this. We just need to not underestimate the enemy. Yeah. Lena sort of stands up, looks very official looking, even though she's like, you can see like a forehead above the table. Um, <laughs> sort of goes, is this meeting to come to a close then? Adjourned. Seems that way. Mm, nothing, if I, nobody has anything else. Zero thoughts? Anything lingering? Um. I'm sure in like 30 minutes something will come up. But not now. Yeah. <laughs> in 30 minutes it's going to hit me like a fucking train. <laughs> I don't think I do. No. Thank you though. Guina, if you wouldn't mind, then. Uh, as Guina sort of swims and sort of circles around, almost creating like a vortex around her, uh, we will take a break. Bye. In this moment, just in case you guys do hit, something hits you in the, in the face 30 minutes from now and you have something to ask. That's a good point, actually. Uh... All right. Reconvene shortly. Long God Con, but a worthwhile one. Answers, tasks, had. T-shirts, right? <laughs> Got any sure, merch? Yeah. <laughs> add, add add one uh, fucking God God Con fourteen seventy five shirt to your. Uh, your no, I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as Guida is doing a sweet three sixty Tony Hawk spin. Uh, any final questions you want to get in? Oh, Jesus. Um, a question I have is, uh, what should uh, we do if we encounter other gods? Should we uh, uh, let them know of your presence? Like, um, like, particularly the old gods, what should we do? That will vary depending on which god you find. Some are more benevolent or sociable than others. I believe all the remaining old gods are quite aware of our situation. But some choose not to act. Should we also look for other members of the first fire? It would be impressive to find more than one. It was several thousand years ago since they existed. And the newest members, at least 1,000. It would be a not a bad thread to search, I believe. I think that's all the questions I have. I'm all, right. Good. all right. Okay. As Gwina begins to spin and just uh, create another vortex. You're all sort of beginning to get sucked into it. Uh, you see uh, Maharl sort of just smile at you. Janna just give a uh, warm, welcoming presence as she sort of just fades into autumn leaves, uh, the current season uh, of leaves. Wait, wait. Uh, Where is that? Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, kind of. She just, just slides backwards into a, like a blanket of 
Autumn leaves, just disappears. Uh, Elena sort of uh, takes your hand and just holds it uh, very tenderly, Zero, and just smiles up at you uh, before just uh, fading into just candle flame disappearing. Uh, uh, Ellie sort of grabs you by the throat <laughs> like Homer Simpson and just says, All right, in I go, boy, and just starts stretching your mouth open and starts like <laughs> putting his legs into your throat and just wearing you like pants and just spreading you apart pretty much and just like making you swallow him uh, <laughs> like a how, snake. How disturbing is that to see? Like, does his jaw unhinge and everything? Yeah, it does. Oh, it's disgusting. It's like um, that scene from Beetlejuice where they all just they like morph their faces into different shapes, uh, a bit like that. Um, yeah, as you're all eventually sucked into the vortex that Guina is creating, and as you do, you find yourself being pulled upwards before being spat out into the world back where you were, uh, just landing very unceremoniously on the just the wet, soggy dirt. Uh, very wet, bedraggled, if you will. Uh, it's still afternoon. You haven't been in there too, too long. Merrick and Gary's nowhere to be found, but uh, Pelagi is still there. As it sort of just looks at the uh, the four humanoids that just got spat out of the ocean or the lake. I take it the Meeting was a success. Reaffirmed our missions, yeah. Then my task is complete. I reside in the palm and its many fingers that extend. This may be the last time we meet. It may not. But for now, farewell. Riley will salute and say thank you for, us, for your service to Our Lady. I'll pick up the pieces from here, yeah? It is good the will of Our Lady is in capable hands. As the dragon just, uh, in very smooth maneuver, the giant furled wings just begin to enclose around the body, and as it just slinks back into the lake, the lights, mesmerizing as ever, flashing, eventually becomes dull and, uh, D dull and what's it called? Faded. That's what it is. Mm. All right, but you are alone in the woods with your thoughts and uh, your VIP cards to the god table. What would you like to do? Should head back, yeah? To where? I'm there. Well, to a dragon. I guess that's a good first step. Or do we just tell Polaris from here to just head to Goldmud? Oh, that's a good point, actually. If he could get there ahead of us. And we do our business in Thane. That's not too bad. That said, how do we find Lypat? I mean, Salith gave us some general directions. We'll have to foot it when we get to uh, Ratavi's old lair, because I'm assuming that's the best place to uh, teleport to. It's deep in the mountains. Um, let me see. What did I probably should have taken better notes regarding her message. But yeah, we'll have to go on foot and on... I mean, everyone else that gets there gets there without a dragon, so I mean, we'll find it somehow. That's true. So, I mean, can I ask? I mean, I... I it's on me that I didn't write it down somewhere, but um, how did Salith say we could find it? Uh... Good question. If you can't uh, find it, it's okay. I'll, I'll have to. Do I believe it. there were signs around the uh, 
Yeah, there, there were signs north, seemingly, I believe. I don't, I don't remember how much detail I got you, but there were supposed to be signs of, like, uh, frozen corpses that apparently had something, uh, like, messages in, like, these can stuff, like, pointing towards various directions and whatnot. And you're supposed to just follow that until eventually you come across a little, uh, very small, I think, illusory, uh, like, doorway that will continue into Lightpat, where you give a bunch of passwords, which I, I do not have on hand. It's somewhere. I'll find it eventually, but... Yeah. I guess we could also just ask Claudine, too. But, I mean, we'll, I, I don't think it'll be that big of an issue to find it. But I, I do think, yeah, sending Ritav... Not Ritav, fuck. Sending Polaris ahead of us... Uh, and we can go do our stuff and I'll just keep up with Yancy and yeah, get more stuff done. Hmm, before we leave, do I have my 7th level spell available to me? No, I don't. Never mind. Yeah, we definitely need to grab a long rest at some point. Do you want to do that first, then teleport to then? Hmm. Yeah, that's probably... Well... Chris, sure. can you even get us there right now? Uh, I could. Oh, you could. Well, I'd much rather rest here than there. Like, right here in this exact spot? No, we could get back to the dragon yet. We still have to decide what Answan's gonna do, yeah? That's true. Um... I guess what I'm going to do right now, since we're here, I'm just going to scoop the the shark parts into the demiplane where the other evidence is. Okay, I'm just going to just shovel some shark into the demiplane. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Okay. It's not too hard. There are small pieces, some larger, but you can roll them into it. Uh, some of them are like frozen salt, but you take like good chunky bits too, like organs. I'm also going to check in there to see if anything happened to the those bodies that I put in there. These are from the uh, Thane, right? Yeah, from that island where Ivandra was on. And they have uh, started to smell and they started to rot a little bit, but they're in the same position as they were before. Okay. I'll just close that demi-plane then. <laughs> okay. And the scent goes with it. I guess we'll just head back to the dragon on foot then. Yep. Okay. I will stealth. All right. Uh, that one's stealthing or just you? Um, I'm not gonna bother. Okay. Uh, sure. Zero. Make a stealth check. Okay. Yep. Just in case you're still staying stealthy, still staying quiet. Pretty good at it, as as you are as a rogue. Okay. You sort of retrace Gary's steps. Uh, not too difficult. You pass through here before, and without the giant coat of fog, it's a lot easier. Um, occasionally, you do come across a few ponds and uh, small little puddles in the ground that still look deep as shit. Um, occasionally, you just don't see them. You step a foot in them, and you think you're going to fall in, but it's just a very shallow puddle that doesn't even like really go up like an inch. Uh, it still gives off that weird illusory effect, but maybe that'll fade. Who knows? Uh, the sun's still shining. The uh, it's certainly a lot clearer and a lot cleaner. Just more, uh, almost yeah, purified is a good word for it. After uh, about yeah, an hour and a half, two hours of walking, you do come across Gary's house again with uh, Ratave or Polaris just sitting there watching. Uh, you hear just grunting. You see the, the little ramshackle uh, house with all the holes and knots, just uh, poorly constructed overall. Uh, uh, you, you, player spots you and just goes, Ah, welcome, masters. You have arrived in time. In time? <laughs> or? Uh, you hear a very guttural cry, just like, ah! 
ah, and then you hear a something slamming against the wood as the entire house collapses. Uh, <laughs> uh, and from the rubble you see behind the house was Merrick like swinging his anchor, like taking out one of the few structurally integral parts of this house. Uh, and you hear somewhat softly in the distance. See, this is what happens when you don't have a good foundation. <laughs> And Gary's just taking notes. Not literally, he's, he can't read. Um, but it's like, okay, okay, yes. Uh, and actually, through spot, you can come around. Uh, Gary's goes, oh, friends. You have returned from hole in water. <laughs> Was it nice? Yes and no. Yeah, it was fine. How much, uh, how much gold you got there, guys? Uh, like, Gary starts counting, like, on his hand, but he does it, like, <laughs> draconic, and then he just looks to Merrick. Uh, Merrick just goes, turns roughly 6,000 in coins. I don't know how much the gems and jewels are worth. Jesus Christ. This is not a character. That, was that just for them? I don't... I was semi-joking when I asked them. I didn't expect them to give us any, but... I'm pretty sure that's their contribution, yeah. Yeah, okay. That's fair. Well, uh, it's a nice little pool to start you off again, Merrick. That's cool. Our contribution was knowledge. Yeah, not as cool, but whatever. <laughs> All about half the battle. <laughs> what did Merrick say? I've been told that's half the battle. <laughs> Wise. Yeah. Uh, Gary just uh, pipes up, intercedes. Are you going away now? Pretty soon here, yeah. Yeah. Well, and he gives a little, like, sad, like, de almost deje dejected look. Shoulders slump a little bit. Be back in the area soon enough. Yeah. You would? Okay. Can't get rid of us too, too easy. Maybe by the time you come back, me and Medic will have built better, stronger house. Looking forward to the end product, buddy. Perhaps maybe I could burn what's here. It will be good ash, fertile soil, and then you can just <laughs> make this a garden and then build the house around it. We can have a big bonfire. <laughs> Gary Sirius goes, Oh, yes, I have heard of gardens. He sort of turns to Merrick. Have you had a garden before, Merrick? And Merrick just has like a thousand mile stare. <laughs> Once. Uh, and Merrick, Gary sort of turns towards you. Yes, burn. I would like a garden. It'll make the destruction process a lot more easier. Oh no. I can, I can just burn the house is what you're employing. Yeah. Okay. It is it is already like somewhat clear around the house because Gary chopped it down already. Uh so, so there's a small there's not a huge chance it'll like spread and cause a huge forest fire. Um Small chance. Uh, just, just uh, so you just throw, what, throw some firebolts? Yeah, firebolt. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just roll the D100 for me. Uh -oh. Just for fun. You're good. You're fine. Yeah, the house catches as after a few firebolts, and eventually this scrap and stuff that was used, like the not good wood pieces um, that weren't already like picked apart by Merrick. Uh, are eventually set ablaze, and over time, sort of, it's beginning to like return to ash, but it'll t still take a while. It's a big house. Uh, uh, Marriage just turns towards you. Well, while well, that's burning, what are you guys going to do now? Hmm. We've quite a few missions ahead of us. Yeah. Save the town. Grab a power nap real quick. 
head to lie pad after this, then uh, gold mud, then fin two. You guys uh, looking to join? We're gonna meet up with Claudine sooner or later too. Merrickshire just looks for a little bit. I'm like, you got a lot on your plate that's not really our business, I don't think. I think uh, a couple of us still have some things to do. At least that's what we talked about last week, Matt. It was my fault that the group disbanded like it did, so it seems like my responsibility to bring it back. Well said. You know where Claudine is, so you just need to find Mondo after that. Yep, that's uh, that's a tricky one. I can relay Mondo a message. Well, I'd appreciate that. I'll just let him know you're here. Uh, but for a while, uh, been a long while, you, you see like the most, the most human you've seen Merrick in a while. Like just, not not like, you know, super soft and giggly, but it just, like, lets a guard down a little bit. You do that. I salute to him. <laughs> Look, I'm not one for long goodbyes, but I do appreciate you guys breaking me out. <laughs> well, it was a little like, don't do it again. Yeah, but, yes, like... yes. Go ahead. Oh, that was it. Okay. I was just going to say, yes, yes, problem. What Jana said, don't do it again. We were like, we're glad you're not in prison, but like, we, we this is the second time now. Don't make it a third. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Gary, would... keep uh, keep Merrick out of trouble. Uh, Gary just goes, yes, I will keep him from uh, killing random people on street. <laughs> and Merrick just sort of just goes, and I will not get caught. <laughs> All right, get out of here. I'll cast uh, pyrotechnics uh, once on the fire. I'll do okay. fireworks. All right. As little <laughs> sparkles erupt from it and just create little pops in the air. Uh, and Gary sure just goes, oh, that was magical. <laughs> uh, Gary sure just turns towards all of you. Are you going now? I don't know. Are we? Guys? I think so. Uh, I uh, might need a rest. Yeah. Hmm. Another yeah. long, drawn-out goodbye, indeed. Uh, Mer Merrick just like. <sighs> <laughs> I just like hangs his head a little bit. Uh, Gary is just elated, big, big toothy smile. Yes, we spend one more night, and we can uh, fish. I, I've never fished properly. Oh, I can give you the ins and outs. Oh yes, that that would be fun. Why do you say it like that? Yeah, 
he's he sees CSL common second language. Yeah. <clears throat> right. So he's gonna spend the night. Uh spend the night, get a long rest for now. Yeah. What time of day is it? Uh currently it is uh like afternoon. Like it's still, it's like three thirty. I mean, do we want to stay here and rest here, or are we going to get on the road and rest on the dragon? Well, there's two schools of thought. One is that time is of the essence, and the other is angry godman over there will get pissed at us if we don't take a break. I don't think he's going to get pissed. I think he just means that we have... We should do it eventually. I'm sure he can understand. I I know I still have some time-sensitive stuff that I'm worried about more so than a break right now. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter where we rest. We could rest on this ground. Or in the oh. dragon. Well, we should probably fill in Ansman, yeah? Let's go, let's make it to the dragon. In hindsight, pretty glad that she didn't come on this one. Yeah. Didn't a lot. We barely made it out of this one. <laughs> uh, as everyone's heading to the dragon, I'm gonna step aside and speak to Merrick privately for a second. Uh, I'm just going to let him know, uh, we had a talk with our patrons, our gods, uh, you know, like the one you have, and, uh, the topic of discussion was the pillars and the invaders. It's reaching a point where we're going to have to act soon, and I've already said this to you once and you don't have to answer me now you can think on it until next time i see you but i'm telling you right now we need your help not just you the four corners we need any help we can get from anyone that can take a few hits it's not going to be easy and the four of us can't do it alone and if you have any care left in you for the people in this world who don't deserve to suffer like we do then please consider helping us in the future. You don't have to answer us right now, but just think about it next time we see you. Make a swing check. Uh, Merrick sort of just uh, looks to do with it with the classic Merrick sternness in his face. Uh, so he just goes. Look, all I can say is I'll think about it. Uh, that's all I can ask, I guess. Thanks for hanging out with us. And we'll see you when we see you. Stay safe. And he sort of just holds out one hand. Slightly sheepishly. I shake it. He gives you a nod as I walk away. And he sort of just sits there contemplating a little bit. What that means, you don't know. <laughs> Okay, I'll head back to the dragon. Okay. All right, so you guys going sleeping on the dragon for now, then? Yeah, filling in uh, and swimming and whatnot. Okay. All right. Uh, so as you're all boarding the dragon, prepare to leave, take off, leave behind the... Uh, the, the two corners that you have align the point, if you will. Um, 
Uh, as you're about to board, Gary sort of just standing in front of the stairs. Uh, <laughs> as uh, and as you all sort of approach, he sort of just uh, stay there, please. And then uh, sort of just uh, zero move right. Uh, Raggedy, move left, and she sort of just directs you to bunch together, kind of. What's up, Getty? Uh, what you doing? Uh, and then he gets a rock, uh, like a really tall rock, and then s puts it in front of you. Uh, Jenna, stay here. Stand. Okay. Yeah. And now, you're, Jenna, you're about head height, roughly, for everybody else. Um, <laughs> and then he just walks and gives you all a big hug. Aww. Aww. <laughs> we love you, Gary. <laughs> He'll be back soon. Yeah, you'll see us again. This piece, it was good to see friends after a long time. <laughs> and you bring back another friend. And now Merrick friend's going to help find other friends. <laughs> I think you are good people. We think you're good too, Gary. <laughs> it's like a hug of five people at once. So yeah. Okay, he sort of just he lets go, backs away. Please stay safe. Good luck on your house. Yeah, careful. I will try not to get crushed again. <laughs> As you're all bored, Gary just waving uh, Merrick a distance away in the same spot that you left him. Zero just looking up at the dragon as the as you take off and uh, the blue speck that is Gary and the uh, old speck that is uh, Merrick and the raging fire between them is all you see and the giant pillar of smoke that's causing is uh yeah, about the last thing you see as you exit the fingers towards uh, your, at least Polaris' destination, which is what, Goldman Harbor? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Antoine sort of is just on the dragon uh, cleaning up, seemingly just mopping uh, stuff that she usually has done before. So, you're back. Any cool things happened? It's pretty we boring. finally got to talk about our gods at once, so that's different. I'm getting a lot of mixed signals. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's being... It's trying to... Trying to be funny. It wasn't funny. Um, yeah, tons of stuff happened. Yeah, a giant corrupted killer shark and uh, a, a, a dragon with the lights on it and then we went into some fancy underwater realm and had god con uh, she, she looks at the clock that's not on the wall and just like looks back this happened all in the span of, what, two hours? You should have seen what happened to us a few weeks ago. <laughs> two hours. Vanished in the blink of an eye. So this is adventuring life. Well, indirectly, at least for me. Uh, not for everyone. Our situation is a little bit unique. I brought you back a souvenir. And then Jana throws her the God Con T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a it's 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 an XXX small for you because you're a gnome. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, she, she takes it. It's like it's like yeah, the fucking like slightly bigger than her hand. She just looks at the the, the God Con T-shirt, fourteen seventy-five. Uh, it has like the cool like logos, but it's like it's like the cheap material that like the, the paint that they kind of flake off in the laundry. Um 
takes it. Well, I'll put it on the next pet I have. Uh, how'd things go here? Just conversed with Polaris about old, tiny magic. I didn't absorb a lot of it, but something to talk about at least. Not just cleaning, keeping, keeping busy. I'm glad you're getting along with Polaris. Uh, Polaris sort of just pipes up the echoey, uh, deep, bassy voice just reverberating around the room. Ms. Premlow is a distinguished conversationalist. I do enjoy our chats together. Aww. Uh, Anselm Sir just goes, and... Not a bad gig flying around a dragon, keeping everyone sane to some extent. I don't know what you eat here. It's savages, honestly. <laughs> Why do I feel like we're in Howl's Moving Castle and being rescolded by Sophie? <laughs> Never watched that one. It's the best one. The living eggs or whatever. Well, what time is it? Uh, it took a few hours to believe, but it's still like 3, yeah, 3.30, like still afternoon. Afternoon? You got, you got daylight, yep. Well, we can always go hunting if you want to brush up on some skills, get some food. Your, your pantry's looking a little bit bare, so that's not a bad idea. I've never been hunting, but it sounds more normal and mundane than sharks yes yeah that shark wasn't very edible otherwise I would have had it for dinner just beware of other monstrosities out there I'll be there oh. it'll be fine yes Jenna can wrestle it for me defend my honor Janna just smiles and laughs. And when chuckles back. The, uh, not the first match we've had in a while, but like the, the, uh, it's, it, it's been some time since it's, uh, there's, there's been a lightness oh. in the atmosphere. All right, let's go see what's in the pantry. And then Janna, like, goes out, hunt, you know, like, clearly not going to the pantry. Uh, you're going out? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I believe you're flying currently or not. Are you guys are you are you guys staying? Oh, I thought on we just the, uh... got here. A bit of a miscommunication. Yeah, what are we doing? Are we flying? Are we heading on to Goldmud right now or are we yeah, resting? I, okay, I we are? Okay. We a no, 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 I'm just saying I tried left. to ask. I, I assumed mean, we, we do, were taking we... a lawn rest before we left. Was I wrong? I mean, we could do things like we could do those simultaneously is the thing. It's, it's really up to you guys. I assumed we were going to just take off and nap on the dragon. I still have a fish stockpile. We can still make food. Can we take like an hour before we leave just to like, I guess if we're on land and we literally don't have food in the kitchen to just go like hunting? That doesn't have to be like a, like a several hours thing. Uh, yeah, you can quickly do a, a bit of hunting before uh, for uh, taking off. It's not too hard. Uh, take an answer with you. Yeah. Okay, make a survival check. Oh lord, roll twenty. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this is part uh, you hunting for food, which is fairly prevalent in this area so it's not too bad you, you see tons of tracks and evidence of berries and mushrooms and like you know uh the game just walking around uh you decide that it, it's probably better to go for something small-ish 
for for Ainswin, so you don't have to, you know, uh, just dissect a whole deer in front of her. Yeah. So, so you go for some rabbits. Uh, as uh, yeah, so this this is part are you hunting and part teaching Ainswin like the basics, uh, which she absorbs some of it. She she gets uh, a little bit confused of where to place feet to like not make as much sound, but uh, she also never held a bow. But you get give some instructions. Uh, she doesn't hit anything the whole trip, but uh, she's there to witness you skinning, dissecting, uh, and just gutting a rabbit. Very basic, and it's, she she's taking it in stride. Like it's not grossing her out that much. Yeah. Have, have a little. Uh, make a little counter for all the skills that Anne's going to be picking up when she's traveling with you guys. Yeah, I'll say this is kind of like a demonstration, and then as we go on, I'll have her do more stuff. Yeah. Leveling up her as an adventurer, she'll turn into a level one adventurer. Um, oh. When we go into battles, and then she stays on the dragon, is it like Pokemon, where she'll get like a little residual XP from us, and like level up so she doesn't have to fights? Just, just power leveling her? Yeah. <laughs> And she's like, got the exp share off. Yeah. <laughs> you come back to Polaris and she's like fucking like like seven foot three and ripped. I watched other people fight. <laughs> like a cure, just that swollen mass of flesh just like turns into ants one after just getting like six hundred thousand xp from just standing there. Because eventually, I mean, she can do whatever she wants, but I think it'd be fun for her to enter like fights. Not like high stakes ones, but you know, like thieves on the road, and she can stand her own ground without worrying about her. But I am worried that in the meantime, it's like, oh, she has like seven HP. <laughs> That's about the average health of an adventurer. Not us. We were out. built different, assembled <laughs> alternatively. <laughs> Wait till you see the booty I put on my Hero Forge, Janna. <laughs> Okay, so are you, uh, you're taking off now, right? Yes, I think so. All in agreement? Say aye. Uh, aye. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, as you all take off, uh, how much time is left? All right. Okay, take off in Polaris. Um, uh, Just double check how long it's gonna take. Uh, so you guys are here. You guys could get there in like fucking someone else. Sorry. Rules and such. Let's double checking. Uh yep, yeah, so your current speed, uh, it'll take you a few days to get there, like three or four days. Take it to Goldman. But I guess you guys will yeah, if you teleport a thing, Polaris will get there in like two or three days. Uh, but as you are in a dragon, uh, you guys can take a long rest. Nothing assails you in on the roads because you're not on them. Uh, recover hit points, spell slots as needed, any items and such. Um, uh, during that long rest, would I be able to contact Mondo through Dream during the night? Uh, yeah, you can try. Okay, yeah, I'll try that and just let him know where Gary and uh, Merrick are. Okay. okay. As you contact Mondo uh, through Dream, uh, I'll check one thing here. Doing this at night? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you try to contact Mondo through Dream. 
Uh, I was just double checking through the spell. Uh, you would know when a target is awake, and currently Mondo is awake. He's up late. He's a night owl. Uh, what time is it currently? Like it's late. It's you said it's late. Uh, yeah. So we'll say yeah. Since you guys aren't a dragon, so nothing's really going to attack you on the roads right now. Um, you guys start. Hey, yeah. Have, having winding out for the day, resting, generally doing less uh, intensive tasks as such like that, and of. Um, yeah, so roughly it's around, let's say, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. All, All right. right. Sorry, go on. No, that was it. I'm just squeezing okay. my chair. All right. Uh, Zero, could you uh, figure out where Tannen is right now? Uh, I just refilled all my stuff. I had already used I have true, so I can't use it till the next dawn. Oh, no, I was talking about scrying. I know. That's, oh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, That's what I meant. Oh. How long ago were was uh actually we have no idea was he when we oh my god I need to get my thoughts straight when you were in the dream with him before was was he still in the hospital do you remember yes he was still in the gown okay uh I think I will take my chances and I'll cast astral project or project image and go to uh he was in a hospital or the hall of the ten. I think it was the Hall of the Ten. Okay, I'll project to the hospital in the Hall of the Ten and see what happens. Did we break the DM? What happened? How well? Simon? He's gone again! Oh, he's thinking about that wordle. Oh, there's something, there's something happening. All right. I saw guess a we green just... circle. Just wait for it to stabilize, I guess. Considering last time it was fixed, nothing was changed. Is it a mic problem, though? <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Why okay. does it like just go in and out so suddenly like that? I don't. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like clearly now that everything is good. Yeah. yeah. What the fuck? I didn't do anything. I didn't touch my mic at all. Okay, so I'm good. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm audible now, right? Yeah. Yes. Do you have a small replica of you made from materials worth at least five gold? Yeah, I would need that, wouldn't I? Yeah, it. Yeah, I, I hate to be a bit pedantic, but yes, it is. It is a cost. Uh, an I would not have thought to do that. Never mind. Talking like a voodoo doll, yeah. Uh, like, like a voodoo doll, as long as it's a slightly more expensive voodoo doll. Yeah, I don't know if I have those materials. Let's see. There is a thing. Where is it? Is it in bio? Yeah, I don't have enough materials for that. I mean, I wouldn't mind going to the art needs to get some ink and paper. Yeah, they're more of a magic shop, though. I don't know if they, like, carry thread. I mean, Maybe like voodoo stuff. 
related accessory? Maybe. I guess it's worth a shot. We once went in there to be like, hey, you want to buy some wood? Can we buy wood from you also? <laughs> That's a fair point, actually. Yeah, alright. Ring the bell. Ring, 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 ring. Okay. Uh, who's entering? I am. Jen will go. Okay. Nito Mosquito. All right. Okay. Uh, Zira, what are you doing this time? Uh, I was going to do a thing, but I can wait till okay. we go to this way. All right. So the three of you enter Abby's store. It is relatively late at this time. Uh, uh, yeah. So the the frog, whose name Orville, uh, is not manning it, but it is the Admies who are currently just winding down for the day. You see, they're already in their jammies. Uh, as you enter, just go, ah, return customers. Welcome to Theopon Put RuPaul's Emporium for Potions and Portents. How may I help you today, Zodiacs? Chris, uh, go ahead. Yeah, I just need some ink and paper for a level 8 spell. Holy crap, okay. Uh, so that'll be 50 gold per spell level. Which, I think it's 50 gold per spell level. For sure it is. Be 200? Uh, eighth level, it'd be, it'd be 400 if I'm correct. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yep, yep, so that'll be 400 gold from you classic wizard stuff for an 8th level spell. Okay. Sounds good. Yep, and that'll take you approximately uh, like 16 hours to complete to record it. You can do a piecemeal, but yeah, it'll, it'll be a while. Okay. 16 hours, you said? 16 total hours, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so just whenever you record it, just keep note of how much... Uh, how much hours you dumped into copying it. Okay. All right, and yep, just in a classic, classic wizardly exchange, you exchange the money and gives you the inks and papers, a lot of them, like in a big bucket. All right, anything else from anyone else? Yeah, actually, if you have anything I could use for some arts and crafts, that would be good. Thread, needles. Okay, uh, we have a couple things, just crafting and uh, creating magical items and such. Yeah, we can spare some. Sure, I'll go with that then. All right, does it need to be expensive? Uh, about five gold worth. All right. Uh, yeah, and they just give you a uh, like a spool of like this silver thread, like pretty thick. Uh, and like a couple of uh, like small little, like like fragments of gem. Like it's it's very small. Like it's not really worth a whole lot. But they just have it laying around. All right, just miscellaneous stuff. Um, yeah, call it five gold. All right, sounds good. Um, move five gold there. Okay, done. Hmm, is there anything else I want? Not really. All right, all right. That's the. Chris and Riley show squared set away. Jenna, what you doing here? Just hanging out. Just wanted to say hi. All right. Orville's not in, but he did have something he wanted to give you. No. Uh, he's just, Rupar! And Rupar, sort of like bleary-eyed and just staring directly into the distance with him looking down at what he's grabbing, just picks something out from under the counter. Uh, you see this, um, very, like, finely crafted, uh, uh, like metal flower that's like, like just been like twisted into like the shapes of petals and stuff. It, it looks like it's made of just like errant scrap metal, but it's like polished and shiny. Uh, uh, he said something about uh, returning uh, a gift, a flower or something. Do I understand what this means? Uh, I believe you gave him like a friendship bracelet or flower. Oh, that's very sweet. Tell him I said thank you. I will whenever he wakes up and we fall asleep. 
Or put one one metal flower in somewhere in your inventory. I love that. Alright, anything else for any of you, or can we hit the hay? You get some rest, alright? Was already on it, but thank you anyway. All right, and thank you for visiting. Thank you for the patronage. Oh wait, I had Good one last question. Back. More so yes. we, and I hope we never do it. Do you guys like? Is there any hour we can't show up? You know, like, not really. It's like Three a.m. and everyone's asleep. Like, what happens? Uh, usually, Orville's kind of an early riser. When we're not in, Orville's in. We do take some nights where relaxing, chillaxing, cool, chilling all cool, you know. Got it. Thank you. All right. All right. Anything else? Final requests? Nothing. All right. Thank you for visiting the Emporium. Thanks for the money. Thanks for the materials. He does finger guns. A lot of people do finger guns in this in this world. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably just make an arts and craft roll. You know. Sure. That button. Uh, yeah. I don't. I don't know what that button is. <laughs> uh, just make. Just make a general dexterity check. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. I mean, it's not like pretty, but you'll you can fashion something in like an hour that'll resemble. That'll represent you at the very least. All right. Okay, uh, in the meantime, Zero, what you're doing? Um, I guess I'll do this while everyone's inside the Atneys. First question, uh, what mountain was Ritave staying in? Like, what region of the of the country was that? that area? Oh, that was in the Shard Mountains. Okay. Yeah. And I believe you know that the Lipat's somewhere either near or in the road dividers range okay um okay i'm gonna cast sending and i'm gonna send to claudine um can i can i see the map really quick uh yeah i'll put it up Okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna cast Sending to Claudine and just say, uh, uh, hmm. I forgot there's a word count for this, but give me a second, hold on. 25. In the Argent Mountain. That was the one with the the mammoth. Yeah, the mammoth was called the Argent Mountain, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Hell yeah. I did not know they had nose piercings. site's pretty fun. It is. I found myself creating characters for like three hours. Oh, Jenna has dark hair? I didn't even consider that. What do you think it was? I thought it was like a light blonde. Mm. Okay, I have my message. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'll pass it in to Claudine and just say, uh, hey, Sunshine, we're heading to Livehat. Would you like help with your father's freedom while we're there? I didn't know how to ask that because I was like, I don't want to just ask him like, hey, where's your dad at? Because I don't know if she wants us to help because I'm pretty sure if we help and we set him free, her and him are going to be on the run for the rest of their lives. So I don't want to intervene if she doesn't want me to, but I, I do want to offer to. Okay. Uh, you hear back fairly immediately. Hey, Moonlight. Uh, no, my father is my business and... I would rather not 
piss off the Rexans more than I already have. I appreciate it, though. That's it, that's all I wanted to do. All right. Cool. Okay. I'm going to run to the restroom really quick. Over there. All right. Okay. So, uh, anyone else want to do anything? I know Riley, you're probably going to cast protect damage. Correct. Correct. Okay. So, Janet, yeah, Chris, you doing anything for the, for the night or you good? Uh, yeah, before I do a long rest, I'll just do some studying and copy into the spell book, I guess. Okay. Uh, how many hours? Uh, I'll probably say we wake up at like 8 a.m. or something like that. I'll go four hours, so I'll start at 12 a.m. to 4 a.m. and then 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. I'll sleep or rest. Okay. So four hours. Four hours. All right, sure. Okay, so yep, just mark off four hours, twelve more hours. You got, you got, you can, you you can eat a monster from anywhere in the world. Uh, Janum, anything? No. Nope. Okay. All right. So, Marley, yep. Within the hour, you do have a rep replica of yourself with you know, with hair and such, and the eyes for the gems. Uh, crude, but it is you're fairly confident it'll work as the components for this. I'll give it an attempt then. I want to project into the Hall of the Ten, the medical, or at least somewhere in the Hall of the Ten anyway. Okay. Maybe let's, uh, you've mostly been in like the main foyer area, uh, or it's like the main priests and such were hanging out there. Um, so we'll say you, you teleport within there. It's kind of a open space though, but you know, it'll work. As you project yourself you can feel you almost like an aspect of yourself being pulled towards about this. Is there? There's no range on this, right? It, there is a range, but I'm well within it. Five. Okay, you're good. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. All right. So eventually, as you close your eyes but open it at the same time, it's almost like you're occupying a different space. You can still feel, uh, you know, the ground up and below you and everything, but like you're also absorbing the senses of your other self located into this and you find yourself within the hall of life in the hall of 10 uh just in the main foyer area there's it's pretty dead in here right now there's only like one priest uh actually like on duty just keeping an eye out and one's just cleaning uh just polishing chairs and washing chairs and stuff like that just looking at the walls and just making sure there's nothing scribbled on there and some children left uh as, as you're the, currently the only person in this room, the priest, just a uh, fairly uh, stout man, long beard, just balding orange hair, just walks up to you. Uh, yes, welcome to the Hall of Ten. Uh, are you in need of a healing? Oh, no, I'm... Uh, I would like to speak with one of the patients here, actually. If he's still here, that is. All right, which, which patient are you? Expecting to see our company, if you, if possible. Uh, Tannen Lorig, if he's still around. Uh, yes, Mr. Lorig is within the Hall of Life. Uh, follow me. Sure. Uh, cool. And he just takes you to the room, and you see, uh, yeah, Tannen Lorig, the, uh, slick back hair, the pointed beard. It's a little bit messier. I guess he, he doesn't look like he's bathed in a while. Um, and like the tan, like skin, uh, just like sunburnt, pretty much. He's just sitting there asleep in uh, the bed closest to the door. Uh, you see the well, very large half elf armor and like a black chainmail, and that that was like cleave in his head, uh, just keeping guard, just watching. Uh, and the priest just walks up to the bodyguard. Uh, this gentleman would like to speak with Mr. Lorig. Uh, and Vodigar just stands uh, and just walks up towards you. He's a towering individual, shaved head. You can see the big scar with an like, indent in it. Uh, as he sort of just... The guard sort of just ushers you out, but almost like following in a way. 
like a come hither motion. Sure. I'll uh, do as uh, he uh, motions. And as he, he leads you out of the room, uh, and as the priest just shuts the door behind and just sort of supervises you. Uh, so you're going to have the priest and the guy, the bodyguard, just outside the room with you, and just he sort of just goes, uh, If you have something to tell the boss, you can tell me. I will tell him when he wakes up. He's a, he doesn't like to interrupt his, his nap three times. Wait, does he speak in like a soft kind of like sheepish yeah. voice as well? Oh, that's funny. A little bit. I mean, my time here is a bit limited. Uh, I would prefer to speak to him in person if possible. Uh, you have to come back when he's awake. I think he's, he's counting sheep. Mm, something tells me he'd be a little bit excited to see me. My, my boss needs his naps. Uh, I'm, like, ethereal, right? I can, like, phase through walls. Uh, I don't know if you can phase through walls, but, like, uh, it's intangible. Things can't touch you, but I don't think you can just, like, walk through walls. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Again, I'm on a bit of a timer. Uh, I, I can't really pass on a message. I need to speak with him personally. No, then you have to you come back. I can't do that, though. That's the problem. Make a persuasion check. Do, 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 do. Where is the score? There it is. It's pretty good. Uh, he's sort of just like looks and just like he's like like he's trying to do like some complex calculus in his head of like what the best decision is. And you can see his eyes just spring to like look in like different directions. You can see, you can see the math equations behind him. Uh, he just goes. Okay, but please make it quick. Sure. He, he guides you back in, and uh, uh, he walks up to Tandalorik and begins to try to shake him awake. Uh, uh, boss? He, he doesn't wake up. He's still snoring uh, very loudly, breathing. Uh, he starts shaking him harder, like slapping his face a little bit. Boss? Uh, he, he's looking back towards you like awkwardly a little bit and just he eventually just gives up and just karate chops him in the throat uh, and he just kind of just ah, ah. oh <clears throat> that's a that's a good chop you got okay uh, then he makes eye contact with you Riley oh uh, he, he starts scrambling for something around the table. He just, he's just knocking shit off the table next to him, like like looking for like something, and he pulls out like a notepad and a pen. Oh, sorry, you need something of me. Um, I, I, I can wait. Oh, yes, hi. Well, first, you know, let me try it. I think I know what you're after. He he hands you the the like a like a pen and a, and some paper. It phases through me, right? Yeah. Yeah, I figured that might be the case. I'm sorry, mate. Oh. Well, this is um, expected. Yeah, of course, I, you're, you're doing your own traveling, of course, of course. Uh, yes, I am recovering. I am sleepy, but yes, I, I, I have always have time for you. Yeah, I told you, mate. It works out in the end, right? I'll turn to the guard. Don't worry about it for now. So, yeah, um, sorry about Zero. They can be a little bit pushy uh and perhaps uh unloads things a bit too much all the time they gave me a brief of what uh, had been gone over um i have a few questions okay um where where did you hear about um our escapades with uh, the the uh the fair haven hags oh merchants we Merchant? have a we have a, uh, well, we had a warehouse in Fairhaven, set up in Fairhaven. So we, we conducted business regularly with Tetsuka. We're one of the main lines of, uh, lines of wealth for the capital between Tetsuka and Abethus. We, we provide a lot of merchants and, well, when you do deeds like that, people notice and word gets around. Hmm. So they noticed. Interesting. 
Oh, someone noticed someone maybe you've talked to, talked to someone else, who talked to someone else, who talked to one of my merchants, who talked to me. It gets down the grapevine, I understand. Indeed, rumors are want to spread. That they are. Mm. Right. Um. I just want to confirm that we're on the same side, you and I. Because it does get a, bit, a bit, little bit strange uh, knowing that you know so much about us that could like come back and bite us, right? I, I'm just being overly cautious. I mean, I, it's it's it, it's yeah, it's it's understandable. But you know, I'm, I'm I'm your biggest fan. I would never do anything to betray you. I mean, I know I only have my word to go on that, but I, I want to prove myself. Just uh, give me something I can do. Something that, uh, yeah. Uh, what? Yes, what? Zero already told me to to spread word about uh, what's happening in in Sod, and I've I've been putting out feelers, talking to various town criers and uh, heraldries and printing printing presses and such like. Oh, then word of that should spread very soon. Yes, I think we're in the final stages of it, actually. Oh, excellent. Um, and you've made sure... Well, I, I don't really know how you can do this. Have you um, made any uh, precautionary measures to make sure that information wasn't sourced back to you? I know not how these things can uh, affect one's uh, standing in a company. Oh, yeah. I have a trusted individuals, or at least reliable individuals and paid that can get the word out. And okay, I know enough about them, too, that if they tried something on me, well, bad mistake. You are quite the capable individual, as I uh, have noticed. Uh, sorry about Chris, by the way. He's a little bit unhinged. Oh, I've, it was an honor to be hit by a fifth level magic missile. And survive, no less. Yeah, you are very powerful. Oh, it's all the ab training pull-ups. I could show you. Uh, 100 push-ups, 100 pull-ups, sit-ups every day. 10 kilometers on top of that. Yes. Mm, exactly. Impressive. Well, that will be unstoppable. Mm. What else do I want to ask this guy? Oh, that's good and well. All right. Uh, it's alleviating my stress a little bit. Because we've uh, a few important operations going on uh, across the globe, you could say. Uh, I won't divulge too much just in case, but uh, yeah, very, very important that we uh, we have as many allies as possible. Uh, there is one confidential thing I want to ask you, though. Do you know of Project Thunderhead? It's something the Silverwind is doing, and I know not what it is, what its purpose is. I assume it's why all this Arcanium is needed, though. Uh, no, I don't know anything directly. Just things I've heard. Rumors, mostly. I mean, there is a large, uh, a large amount of money being funneled into something. But it was above my pay grade, so I never asked. Hmm. Now keep your ears peeled for that one, too, then, yeah? Yes, I believe that's one of the tasks uh, Zero gave me as well. Oh, good, good. Uh Yeah, those are those are my major concerns. There is something Zero didn't mention though. Um Wait, did they? I don't remember. Uh while our uh Hmm. Our missions here on the mainland and elsewhere are numerous indeed. There is one other mission that takes kind of priority above some of them and ties it all together a little bit. Uh, I won't say too much because I've come across some more revelations as of late, but there is an overarching enemy that all of us need to be prepared to face. And by all of us, I mean everybody on this realm. Okay. Sorry, I can't say more. I don't keep in suspense. 
just be prepared when something breaks out is all I'm saying. Okay, is it bug men living under the surface of the earth? I mean, uh, more people are seeking to, to dig out the foundations of cities, cave them in. You're not far off. Though I will say one thing. If your scouts or any uh, confidence you have come across something that looks like a black glass obelisk, uh, do everything in your power to destroy it. Okay, black glass obelisks. Another thing to keep an ear out for. Uh, yes, I'll see what I can do. I have, I have capable people in my employ. I believe that's all. Uh, if you want to ask me questions, uh, there's obviously things I cannot divulge, but I'm willing to answer anything else for your time. Uh, one question. What's up? Next, you're in Abethist in the flesh. May I have your autograph? There's not something insidious that can be done with one's signature, is there? Not to my knowledge. I suppose mm. if the right people get their hands on a signature, they could forge it, but I'm not asking for a, a, a contract signature. I would just want a name on a piece of paper so I could frame it in my office. Yeah, I could do that much. Great. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah, he, he puts away the, the pen and paper. Is there anything else you require of me, or I can, I can, I can get started? Um, I don't want to task you with too much. I just needed to make sure that we have an ally in Silverwind, or at least an ally inside Silverwind, not in the company itself, obviously. Unless something changes and old guard, or the old guard is replaced with new ones. Uh, we, uh, yeah, we'll be doing our part to uh, continuously reduce the amount of suck in the world. Uh. And uh, once things have cleared up a little bit and I'm in the area again, I'll at least uh, swing by with a projection or maybe one of my colleagues will uh, come interrupt your dreams for a bit and see what's going on. You're a mage, yes? So what was that? You're a mage, yes? Dabbling, really. Mm, no access to sending yet, him? No, that is a bit above my skill level that's it's pretty high up there i can cast he, he sort of just casts something with his fingers and like it like the crumbs on his bed cleans up prestidigitation i like studying it though but i'm not not up there mm. can i insight check that make an insight check do, 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 do. also we've got our new slogan Zodiacs taking the suck out of the world. <laughs> a big, like, bolded, italicized font that's, like, way too hard to read. <laughs> uh, seems fairly forthright. Hmm. Yeah, don't, not don't like get a sense of like, lying or anything. And he's not, like, hiding his power or anything. You don't get a sense, though. Oh. Uh. Yeah, again, sorry to unload all this and, uh, continuously question your loyalty it is just imperative that we have an understanding and uh i want to assume the good in people but i've also seen the evil yes i've, I've dedicated a good chunk of time documenting your good i'd like to do it more Maybe after the autograph, we can go for it. Uh, uh, this is maybe presumptuous of me. Uh, uh, a bite to eat, maybe. Oh, I'm a good cook. Fry up some fish. Would you do that? Of course. Great. Great, yes. Uh, that's a plan. A, not a date. No, that's a bit... Um, <clears throat> that's uh, for a plan, yes. Right, stay alive until then, yeah. Oh, I'm in the safest place I can be right now. That's true. Um, shit, there was something else and I already forgot. Right, those documents, do you have any of those on you? Not on me, no. I have... Uh, well, I was... Well, blasted. Only 
48 hours ago, but... True, true. When Sorry, I get something... Happens, it feels like much longer. Yes, it feels like it's been four weeks. Um, yes, when I, when I get the chance, I'll find... But contact you, contact me, but I, I'll... I'll have something, documents, anything. It's worth noting that uh, we're kind of... I don't know if messages can be sent our way. We're a little bit uh, hidden from the world. There are people out there, as I'm sure you've seen the posters. A certain Grand Arbiter wants us. Uh... Are you using some anti-strying amulets, perhaps? Yeah, that's it. You'll be fine. Sending is, is an evocation. Okay, that's fine. Good, good. Yes. Uh, so sending is, is totally fine and good. Yes. Yeah. If you can find a, a way to uh, access that kind of uh, magic or learn it, then yeah, you'll be able to contact us. No problem. Like I can hire somebody. Yes. Yeah, that works. Right. Right. Yes. Cards on the table. This is like the handbook sent me. Okay. It'll Anything be a few else? weeks before uh, we're available to do like much else there's a lot going on and we need to uh, tend to very many things so th even this is a little bit like uh, i'm in the middle of something else elsewhere so this is the best i can do i'm sorry oh, this is fantastic i can see you i can converse this is better than my wildest dreams um, is there anything required of me anything else no just uh Make sure uh, the higher ups don't suspect anything, I guess. And uh, I'm pretty good at being harsh, harsh. Try and uh, well, no, you're already trying. You're you're uh, documenting a bunch. You're getting the word out. Perfect, perfect. All right, just yep, checking in, making sure everything's fine. And uh, you're pretty good at uh, uh, getting stuff done from your bedside. I'm looking forward to what you're able to accomplish when you know you're uh, healthy and out of here. Most of my power just involves talking to people and telling them to do things. So it's Words are have powerful. My mouth. That they are. All right. Well, if uh, something else, I think I can get some Z's now. Yeah, sorry about that. This was the most opportune time to go for this. So yeah, you get to rest. All right. All right. Well, thank you for conversing with me, of all people. Uh, see you soon, I hope. As do I. All right. Well, good night, Mr. Riley. And good night and, to you, Tannen. And like a light, he's out. Like, immediately. Like, he, he was all chipper and stuff, and now he's just snoring. Like, very quickly. Wow. He's quite the character. Zero was right. Yeah. And you end uh... project damage. Uh, I'll uh, turn to the guard if he's still there and be like, wait, is the guard still there or did he walk out of the room? No, he's, he's, he's sitting there. All right. Make sure that you also don't let any of this information leak, yeah? Okay. Thanks. You, you, you get the sense he wasn't really even like, following most of it, so you're, uh, you're, your secrets are safe with his, with his indifference. It's fine. Perfect. All right. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to explore the Hall of the Ten a little bit and look for anything that may point towards, like, the genesis of a god. Okay. Um, let's make an investigation check. Turn. Can't interact with anything, but that is, uh, if there is anything here, I found it. Okay. Uh, just around the Hall of the Ten, uh, Nothing like that points to like the like just you know the uh, like here are the rules of godhood, um, but th there are those like f f uh, separate pillars in the central, uh, I guess the foyer area of the whole hall of the ten, like where all the halls meet. There's this, there's four central pillars that sort of tell the story of the ten, and you get the uh, they're always depicted as just always being there, and people just accepted it. And eventually they just created the Titans, which then also and then created people. And then uh, people rebelled, fought back. Titans were uh, either hijacked or killed or whatever. Uh, and then that's all cleaned up in, in the third pillar as the revival area where everything's sort of just recovering. Um, 
Yeah, but you've seen that when you first walked into the Hall of the Ten for the first time, like a while ago. So there's nothing new. Uh, yeah, but you don't find, you know, the, 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 the how to create a god for dummies. All right. Um. Yeah, in that case, I'll end project image. Okay. As your senses get shot back to your body. Uh, conversation with Tantaloric Head. Perfect. Mission accomplished. Okay. All right. So, long rest completed. Can I do one more thing before I go okay. to rest? Sure. What's up? Um, I just wanted to send that because I have two of these level two spell slots. Can I send sending one more time to somebody else? Okay. Sending is a level two? Yep. I'm sorry, level three. Excuse me. I have two level three spells. Okay. Um, I want to send to... Fuck, I don't know. I guess I'm going to send to Agrabane and Fentu. Okay. And I counted, this is exactly 25 words. Um, this is what I'm going to send. It says, uh, Nyx is alive. They've done something to her. Don't trust her. What's that guy's name that she killed? Uh, Ulan, I think. Okay. So yeah, Nyx is alive. They've done something to her. Don't trust her. Ulan is dead. Allies in the city are compromised to warn everyone I'm coming home. That's 25 accounted. I can send it in main if you want me to. Have it down. I got the gist. Okay. Uh, okay. It takes a while for a response to come in, like a minute or so. Uh, it's somewhat dry and short and terse, but that's Agrippin. Uh, and you hear just in your head. You're still alive. Appreciate the heads up. Conversations need to be had. That's it. I mean, I guess I I know him well enough. Do I need insight that? Does he sound angry? Or is that just how he sounds? Just make an insight check with advantage. You, you, you've... you've, you've You've met with a guy for a while. It, it's he's he's Agrabin. He's <laughs> he's he was always kind of like a rough individual to begin with, but you can tell when he's uh when something's bothering him. There's there's something bothering him in a uh in in, in a pissed off manner. Okay. All right. Long is complete. Anything else for the night? Uh, I may as well use my daily sending to go to Claudine and say, uh, wait, did I already, did we already let her know that the two of the four corners have reconvened? I can't remember. I think you did last session. Okay. Then I'll, I'll hold off. Never mind. Okay. All right. So if there's nothing else, that's it. Okay. Right, but long rest completed. The sun rises on your dragon. And you've traveled a good distance away from uh, where you last saw Gary. And from your high vantage point, Riley, as you look out through the front of the dining room window, you can see uh, Gullman Bay, even from this distance. Uh, you can't see a whole lot of details. The town isn't really visible from here, but you can see the water. Uh, just little specks of it, and you can see very, very, very faintly uh, with your highest perception, like the beginnings of ships sort of going to and from uh, small little uh, wooden docks just parked around the entire bay just to have a place to rest or land at their least or repair uh evocative of home at least for you as you are a few steps closer uh 
to a long coming and warm uh, homecoming. All right, and we will pick it up from there next time. Hello. Good sesh. Godcon, Godcon. Godcon. Godcon 1475. How much EXP we getting from that? Uh, let's go. Are RP heavy? Some good, good questions. Good RP. I'll give you guys, I don't know, 2K. That's what I thought. Excellent.